Welcome to Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Samantha, our producer, is here. Butler's about to go uh, brave the uh, the Publix. Mine the arrows on the ground. Mine That's the arrows right. on the ground. You got to mine the arrows. In some grocery stores, like the Publix that's near our studio, now there are one-way aisles. So in order to be considerate for everybody else, just kind of mind the tape that might be on the ground. It'll help you out and probably make people that are shopping with you feel a lot better. But, hey, welcome to the show, everybody. Any, anything to plug right now before we uh, just kind of jump into some voicemails and emails? Because people have time, so they're reaching out. Well, when you order anything on TomAndDan.com, any merch order that you order, you get a free pair of sunglasses and what was the other thing? A koozie, right? Yeah, sunglasses, a koozie. Yep. Uh, Eric usually throws in a magnet, stickers. Um, so, uh, we're just trying to incentivize, uh, orders on our website. I like that word, incentivize. Because that's a uh, way that, uh, you could, uh, help us out. Um, yeah. also, uh, if you want to play poker for real money, we got bdmpoker.com. Uh, you'll just have to download the Poker Bros app and then follow the instructions and play with other BDMs. Uh, you'll see a lot of people with BDM in their name. That's because, how you know. Because they're, basically you can only choose from like five or six, like, uh, what do they call Avatars that uh, yeah. represent you. Different guys. Um, but you'll tell by the names. And uh, there's a Facebook, uh, BDM Poker. And uh, if you're into playing poker, uh, it's real money. So you deposit real money. You can make real money. Uh, someone won. Uh, what was it last week, right? I think it was like uh, t- either seventeen or eighteen hundred bucks. Yeah, wow. It was tournament. like it was like close to two k. I'm like, yeah, this, holy this was two days. crap! That could go a long way right now, right? Yeah. This was two days ago. Um, that, oh, uh, that Craig. W- oh, then that was more because there was a guy that won last week, and I thought he got like uh, at least a grand. Um, this guy says uh, BDM. Um, basically, oh. 2500 bucks. Uh, how mm-hmm. to beat him in the KO tournament uh, win 2500 uh, This was, <laughs> Are this you was on Tuesday. That? No, but I need to be, apparently. Yeah, I mean, like, even just a pop in, pop out. Like, it's so <laughs> easy. It's it's super duper simple. And I downloaded the app. Now, My there's only... a lot of people that have lost a lot of money. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't I get mean, me wrong. You can lose, but if you. If you you just... have to play tight. You got to play tight. That's yeah. the key. <clears throat> if, you, if you don't uh, normally play poker, jump on the real small mm-hmm. tables. Yeah, just for fun. And just learn how people play because um, there are some good players. So. Uh, you got to be conservative at first uh, and understand the game. Um, and But you can get in free tournaments, and uh, and those free ones, uh, you could be a little more loose, and uh, and yeah. th- sometimes you have to be the Pretty way. much you can play any way you want to. If you want to go in there and go crazy, look, yeah. that's your money and your business, so go ahead. I would say right now would not be the time to do that, but hey, you're your own person. Yeah, you- but... Yeah, uh, chase that flush and, yeah, uh, yeah. and uh, <laughs> hey, make some people real mad oh, when mad, you... Mad. Uh, when you donkey win on the river. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it happens. I mean, that's yeah, the beauty yeah. of being a donkey is sometimes you're king donkey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, yeah. it's fun to be king donkey because yeah. it makes everybody mad. Yeah. Um, let's jump into some voicemails. That'll give uh, Samantha some time to go through emails and get some weird emails. The vast majority of the emails that I'm getting, and guys, you can keep sending these because I certainly do appreciate it. It's a B12 shot for me to get an email of somebody saying like, hey, I appreciate you guys trying to make me laugh right now. Or, you know, I'm out still working. I'm still delivering Amazon packages or FedEx or, you know, or UPS. So um, for all of you guys out there doing it, for you grocery store uh, operatives, that's what I'm calling you now, um, <laughs> you guys are on the front lines. And, and we I know that we all appreciate you guys. Um, you're busting your ass, so thank you for doing it. Yep. So let's. Um, I know you like small business stuff. Let's jump into these because um, this guy has a small business, and he wanted to make sure that you knew about this, Tom. Hey, guys. BDM Todd here. Um, you can use this on any of the shows, a corporate time, um, the BDM show, Friday Free, whatnot. <laughs> hey, thank- Name all the shows. I, I'm glad he did. That's a, <laughs> this guy's a pro, right? Yeah. He comes in, and he's already got a spiel ready, and he's giving us a little plug. Thank you so much. Um, I was wondering if you guys are taking advantage of uh, this stimulus package, more so not personally, but toward the Small Business Administration thing. Um, there's two different options. There's the payroll relief, and then there's the disaster relief. Um, I myself uh, have applied for the uh, disaster relief as a small business owner. And even somebody like Sam and Travis, if you guys have your own LLCs, um, I believe you might be independent contractors for TND. Uh, Redco Media. <laughs> <laughs> 
that makes Get him. me giggle. Uh, uh, you guys might be. He's making fun of Butler's company name, which is Redcoat Media. But which, I also... by the way, I still haven't written a check to because uh, he he, he hasn't that. gotten his affairs in order apparently. Oh, which really? is ridiculous. It's uh, been forever. Uh, so he's one of these guys saying he is Redcoat Media, but yeah. he's like, but my papers aren't like fully. Right, right. Oh, uh, come like, on! He's got to go to Bernie like I did. His, his wife's a doctor. He's just uh, he's, he's he's laying it off on her. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. At the he's end riding of the year, her coattails. Yeah, for yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. At the end of the year, <laughs> just making her pay a massive tax. Yeah. But he does have a shirt that says Red Coat Media, yeah, yeah, yeah. which is oh, yeah, really yeah. cool. And uh, a hat, a couple of flat brims. Uh, if you have your uh, federal EIN numbers and things, you might it's you might be might might be able to receive some federal grants. Okay, there you go. So basically, the yeah the idea uh, the idea of this call is that there are federal grants or, or ways that small businesses can maybe prop themselves up right now. I don't know that much about. I do it. have to look into them though because I have heard different things from different people. Well, the, the thing is, to me, right now, as of today, we are not uh, devastated by this or anything. Yeah, and yeah. Th- yeah, but and it's day no- to day, right? And there's nothing that uh, we immediately need help. So I have not looked into it. Um, I know there's a- here's the other thing. Don't don't apply for these things if you don't need them. Yeah, right yeah, now. yeah exactly. Some Correct. people really do need them. It's the same Co- thing. It's the same Correct. thing with everything. Like uh, if you part, don't need toilet paper, don't buy it. Yeah, right. Part of living in a society and being cool with everybody, we've all learned, is like, hey, take what you need, uh, right. not over what you need because other people need it, and we all need to abide by that to help each other because sure. we all live in a society Correct. and rely on society to move forward. And that's what a lot of people like, you know, the the selfish people and the people that are panicking and like only think about themselves is like, all right, you could panic hoard all you want. We rely on society to live. That's our main, uh, you know, the, the, your main fear should be we need society. <laughs> like that's all, like the baseline it's of what we need. Very disappointing though, right now. Like uh, <laughs> if society <laughs> goes, I see glimmers of hope occasionally. If yeah. society breaks down totally, which is not, don't be scared yeah. of that happening. Don't freak out, bro. But if it does, there's, I mean, your small amount of uh, hoarded food is going to run out. Your bullets will run out. Everybody will die. <laughs> I'm just uh, saying. Probably, that yeah. will not happen. I mean, I Don't to, worry. I hate to disappoint you. Uh, <laughs> and I know we've talked yeah. about this before, but I feel pretty confident you're not yeah. going to get to use your bullets unless you're using just one of them. And I think you know what I mean. Yeah, I mean, I don't think so, you're going to be holding it down from the window of your home. I, I, exactly. Once uh, all out war, yeah. <laughs> like civil Come war on, starts, like, yeah. you know, it's the end of everything. Dead, yeah. right? Well, hey, you got so, you got 12 rounds and a can of beans. You're fine. So the, bi- <laughs> the small businesses that really need the relief should look into that. Right. Um, and if you don't need it, because I have seen people post online and stuff like, oh, get this free money that the government's giving. Well, like, great. First of I all, like, it's, I don't believe now i don't know because i haven't researched it but i don't believe there's any free money to be just given out because yeah, remember the I'm guy remember the guy in the suit paid with the question marks all over yeah. it and he'd be like that's yeah. tons of free money and, and if you think or want to <laughs> scam free Andrew money Lescow. uh from small business loans even though you don't need it that is a bad thing, and that is not doing anything. You're part of the problem. Yeah, you're part of the problem. <laughs> what about uh, uh, for in Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tom and Dan Live in the chat room. Grady Season says you can double up on your stimulus money if you take the loan and then go to BDM uh, Poker. <laughs> I yeah. think that's a great idea. Uh, do that. That's, I think uh, that's st- and then you go to the big boy tables and lay it on the line. What do you uh, think, Tom? Good uh, idea. Uh, yes or no for Grady? Yes or no? I would not uh, advise that. Okay. Uh, all right. Right. You know. Grady, do not do that. But um, all I'm BDM saying is, poker.com. I don't know enough about the uh, small business loans and the grants and stuff to speak on it. Uh, but as of now, we as a company do not need that. Um, luckily, we have all the stuff saved in case we do, though. I mean, I'm not going to BS you. I mean, I keep those emails and we save that kind of stuff because who knows? But yeah. we're not there yet. Yeah. We, and we immediately prepared by like saying, we're all right. hoarding all the toilet paper first. <laughs> That's what I did. I stocked the studio. All the, no, we're out of toilet paper actually. I'm borrowing from the house. And um, we're uh, Samantha and Travis and Tony. 
Uh, and we're trying to help Eric, our merch guy. Yep, right. uh, obviously, with merch, he gets paid by more merch to sold. But everybody is still getting paid the same amount, and everything's uh, still chugging moving, along, moving yep. forward. Luckily, I mean, I don't know if anybody wants to hear this, but T and D Media is pretty <laughs> diversified as far as the way its revenue comes in. Which we that are mi- that means we do it all under the table crooked. <laughs> <laughs> we are lucky compared to other businesses, which. Their main revenue may be bar sales or food sales yeah. and stuff. And then when you cut that totally off, your entire business is in jeopardy and they need the stimulus packages and they need uh, the payroll relief, especially for their uh, employees that are not getting paid. So those businesses should uh, use those benefits first. We don't need that because we're not in yeah. that. And, you know, that we're, industry. we're also I think uh, I think we're in a position where and, and this is where we want to be where, you know, like trying to, you know, be entertaining, be funny, make you guys laugh and also help you guys out. Yeah. You know, I mean, uh, the best that we can. Um, I shared some stuff with my uh, with some friends that put out some uh, paper towels and they did the old drive by grab the bag scenario. You know yeah. what I mean? Just do that kind of stuff because it will come back to you, man. I really no. believe in that. Now, here's the thing. Nobody's no business is immune to failure. No. Uh, and if, if uh, to be honest, if enough I mean, av- look at the Orlando Predators. Yeah, but if, if enough advertisers um, just didn't have the money to advertise, we'd be in bad shape. If enough BDMs fell on hard times, they didn't have enough money to pay for their subscription, we'd be we'd definitely be affected. Yeah. Uh, as of Uh-oh. right now, that's not the case. Can't make up for it now. <laughs> but yeah. who knows what's happening. The first happening. time that's ever been said. <laughs> Who's gonna, who knows what's going to happen in the future. But um, I'm not currently looking at any small business loans or anything. I'm also like, I'm not an inherently positive person, but... I do in this particular scenario, I'm trying my best to stay, you know, as positive as I can. And because I think the helping part will change your attitude. Yeah. You know, if you're if you can and sometimes it's tough because the mental illness aspect of what's going on right now is going to end up being a lot worse than we're even seeing right now. Imagine if you're a person you can't even get to see like your therapist or something like that. You know, like of that course, could be yeah. make or break they are you. doing um, telemedicine. Yeah, yeah. So you can't do your right? therapy yeah. over the phone. But, but anyway, I know online. I'm talking about personal stuff. You're talking yeah. about business stuff, and I'm just saying the overall idea should be let's all help each other. You know? and yeah, and don't and that's another thing too because I did read an article about uh, like the small business loan aspect of this. The, you know that the it was flooded like crazy yeah and i can imagine i don't know like um, you get scared i would imagine but right? there's a lot of people that have technically an llc or an independent contractor or i have a small business that heard like hey there's grants or free money and then immediately applied for it even though maybe I, you don't I, need it i don't believe in the term free money yeah, <laughs> so no, no. just be cautious it's I've also never it's, that. it's it's offered as relief and relief means that you're stricken by something yeah. And if you're not stricken by something, don't go and try to get relief if you don't and need also, it. Also, don't go chasing waterfalls. <laughs> yeah, Everybody yeah. knows. Yeah. Well, that song's about uh, AIDS. And look. That's into why I don't listen to it. Because uh, I would assume. Now again, Yuck. I have, I have no uh, idea if this is true or not. But I assume that if you did take some sort of loan or or grant or something, that you'd have to pay it back. And maybe that there's some stipulation you don't have to pay it back if your business fails. But if your business fails, then what's the point? You know what I'm saying? So uh, I would assume that if you take it uh, and then uh, a couple years from now you're thriving – the government's gonna make you pay it back. They're coming for that money. Paying taxes or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Like they're just like, here's fifty thousand dollars. Oh, you're still fine a year from now. Oh, you're rich. You're fine. Then, <laughs> yeah. then keep it. And like I, so it's if, a gift. If you take money, you you should expect to pay it back. And if you can't pay it back in the future, then it's gonna be bad for you anyway. Could so, be. Yeah. Um, so just be wise. Just take it if you need it. And read everything. You know, there's some yes. good points being made in the Twitch chat room, Christine. Number one overall says this is the ultimate be cool bro time. Agreed. Um, and then, yeah, read everything really, really well. And uh, and if you don't understand something, get somebody you know that does. Yeah. Email them and let them read it. And, and just don't take something you don't need. Nope. Uh, that's uh, the overall thing that I would. Don't uh, be greedy. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and leave it for the people that actually need it because society needs it. Um, because there are businesses, obviously, that uh, are 
really, really hurting uh, because they can't even get revenue. And that's the that's a, it's like oxygen for a human. It's what you need the most. Um, uh, and uh, for a business is just basic revenue. And when you eliminate that, um, that's why we have these stimulus packages to begin with. Indeed. Let's try. You got an email? Uh, sure. Yeah, let's jump to an email because uh, those are starting to pile up. I mean, people... And some excellent writers, you know, like it's funny when we have There's also some terrible ones. There are, there are some, well, that, <laughs> we most of that share. is alcohol induced, I feel Probably. like. I've been getting a lot of alcohol induced or marijuana induced emails that are all over the place. Okay, this says, hello, old friends. I'm writing to tell you that I think that your documentary is excellent. I had kind of fallen off as a listener lately, not because I don't like you guys anymore, nothing like that. Life just got busy. That film has pulled me back into the fun and comfortable zone of the comedy that comes from your podcast. I hope that you're all doing well, and I look forward to listening to all the episodes that I missed. And this is a Chicago BDM. Oh, Oh, is that... uh, Christian. Christian, yeah, 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 awesome. Well, welcome back. Back in, welcome back. Yeah, welcome back. (laughs) And and that happens. That happens to everybody. That's just just a regular listener routine, man. I do it with uh, podcasts that I listen to, and I even do it with bands. Like, more... Often than not, like Bad Religion is a band that, that I'll say is one of my favorite bands, but I don't listen to them all the time. Right. But I do go through yeah. periods where I pop back in and I listen to everything they've ever done. I think that's probably going to be the new way that people consume audio, uh, like podcasts and things like that, are that they ebb and flow based on their mood and things like that it's like they, sure. they they start listening to this because there's just so much out there so sometimes you get in the mood for this or like i know that i tend to uh like gravitate towards sports podcast when i get stressed out or i don't want anything serious yeah like it's my uh it's kind of like my reality like show guilty pleasure it's your yeah. getaway because it's just it, it's technically nonsense i mean yeah, but it's like it, a comfortable place for you yeah. right and it's not anything serious and it's just uh i don't have to think about it you know really it's just uh it's basically you know like i said uh it's a it's a non-stressful uh, escape for me because it just you know like I said sports is yeah. just like uh, any fantasy or uh, like cartoon yeah, it or could, sci-fi it, it might it's as well just, be Game of Thrones you know it's yeah, knights yeah. and uh, knights and unicorns yeah. is you're uh, playing a silly game yeah. you know at the at the bare minimum well, like, it's, it's a, like video games yeah. to me you know like I have no yeah. problem you know if I want to turn my brain off I gotta it's do a, something yeah, yeah. like that yeah, yeah it's an escape you know? yeah, and you're able to yeah. actually disconnect a little bit. Everybody should be doing that right now. And you should have something. Although like, sports is not uh, happening. No. But mentally, I mean, but, you know, maybe go back. Like, you know what? I, you know what I got sucked oh. into yesterday that was like crazy was old. I mean, old, not 1990s, 2000s, old classic NFL films. Oh, they're still good, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. The way that they cut the music and the just the editing, and it's like, they're amazing. And I started getting sucked into them. I remember watching them with my dad. So I'm taking this time to go back and just kind of revisit things that I, I know I used to enjoy. Yeah. But as time goes on, you kind of pull yourself out of that because, like, I think you feel like the faster time goes, the the like at least I do the faster time goes I feel like I need to reconnect with stuff that's in the now not go back and and see old stuff mm, I, yeah. it's a it's a weird condition or thing that I have but anyway um you could take the time to do that let's uh let's try this email um uh, Mike B calling in now I think I think he is drunk but I think he tries really hard to hold it together so we don't <laughs> think he's drunk and you'll know what I mean Hey, you guys, Mike Lee from the Only Radio Show here. I just wanted to take... Oh, hold on, it's going a little too fast. Mike B from the Oh No Radio Show here. Um, I just wanted to give a kind of a general PSA out for everybody because it seems like everybody's ordering out. And Is he sounding next to a... He sta- sounds like he's standing next to AC a unit. squeaky 100%. AC unit. Yeah. <laughs> oh. yeah, he's out back... He's uh, smoking. He's yeah, out yeah. back smoking, right? I mean, that's what I'm hearing. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And definitely drunk. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> definitely. Oh. There you go. So, if the place you order from is cognizant enough and polite enough to tell you, hey, your food's not going to be ready for another... 35 to 40 minutes. 
don't show up in 10 minutes and then pitch a fit that your food's not ready. You're the asshole here. You're the asshole. I love you guys. Bye. Uh, one no. of the things that I enjoyed about this phone call is that in while Mike was trying to hold it together, um, he says, if the place you're ordering food from is cognizant enough, is he assuming that I'm ordering for like I walk into like whatever restaurant and everyone there is out of their mind? Well, like, if my fee's working there, yeah, yeah. maybe. I'm uh. just saying I've never heard the adjective. I've never heard that displayed. Like I'm like my wife is gonna order out today. We were thinking about going to Johnny's, right? Getting a hamburger. Uh. I'm craving a hamburger. That's been happening lately. It almost makes me feel like I'm pregnant or something. But I'm craving <laughs> hamburgers like crazy. And uh, I, if Andrea came back with our hamburgers and said, you know what, the guys at Johnny's, you're not gonna believe this. They were cognizant enough to fill my order i would be like this is weird like that is a weird oh. thing to say that <laughs> yeah. is not a normal thing to say yeah yeah. they actually made <laughs> yeah, they, what i ordered they were a lot when i got there they were not an ebri like how does that i don't know okay anyway uh, you know what i mean also who's getting like uh incensed about uh their order not being ready or like, like in especially during this time like uh God damn, how narcissistic People can you be? People are really mean right now. Uh, are they? Yeah. Uh, I mean, you've seen the stories where, like, cashiers are getting spit on. Spit on? Like, I, I have Why a friend that works at a, on a cashier? at a grocery store, and he's like, it's like there's no rules. People are just walking behind the counters now and just grabbing stuff. Like, it's, it's chaos out there. People are a-holes. Yeah, I mean... Well, we hear the... You're gonna stories, you're gonna see the extremes but, for sure. But for sure. but it, is that bias? Because in reality, I haven't seen anybody. I have. You have you? I've seen someone yeah. get yelled at at a store. A couple I, different ones. I uh, I I have yet to. Not yet. I haven't. Seen, I've seen some tight. I've seen some like I've seen tensions rise a little yeah. bit, but I haven't seen anybody like full on yell yet. Because I often wonder if it if it skews our. Uh, how we see society because we often only see the worst parts on social media or like the news or whatever. So we're seeing like, you know, the people go crazy over the toilet paper and you see those little video clips or you see like the story of the crazy person, the spitting on everything at the grocery store. And then you're like making a blanket statement like, God, everybody is horrible. And then you're like, well, this is like, five different stories from around the country of 400 million people yeah, you know so what I'm saying? Like, up, it's so like, yeah, yeah, yeah it's just like uh we're i think we, you you get you know your meter gets thrown off because you're seeing the worst well different people are going to e experience it different ways obviously but i have yet to see the worst of humanity i'll put it that way yeah. me me personally i've seen some things get tight but most people i've seen are smiley and relatively kind i haven't yeah. seen anything really crazy yet at least nothing that like no. would would rate on like the facebook or like of course yeah, yeah, yeah. nothing like that I, in reality i've only seen people being responsible nice and uh and then respecting everybody and like samantha and, had a yeah. guy like uh like getting up on her right didn't you have a guy that yeah was, like, was that yesterday well, not, not like getting up on her like at the club yeah they up, had the the tape down for the six feet apart for the line yeah. and he was Right behind, like he was not abiding by it at all. I literally had to look over my shoulder, and I was like, "Uh," and then he like kind yeah, of backed is, up, but he still didn't even back up to the. Spot what is he's the correct to. way of handling that? You just say, "Excuse me," <laughs> yeah, and I'm sure they'll is be it, like, is And then it, what if they don't say anything back and they just stand there and look at you? Well, I I bet they would probably be like, "Oh, can you, okay, can you yeah, back yeah. up, they, sir?" Yeah, because sometimes they people know. are just completely oblivious, right. you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I, that's I, the problem. I was, I went over there. I didn't even look at the lines, and I was like standing weird. And you know, it takes some getting used to. This isn't something that we typically do. You know what I mean? Like, this is all new stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think with all new stuff, just because maybe you got it down, doesn't necessarily mean that everybody else does. So again, Christine in the Twitch chat room, Twitch TV slash Tom and Dan Live. She's correct. Be cool, bro. Ultimate be cool, bro. Rules apply. Um, that was my B. Let's go back to email. Okay. This says uh, haircuts. Yeah, uh, this is a big deal, right? In fact, did you guys notice I had to swoopy do my hair again because I can't get it to? <laughs> uh, it's too. It flops over. So now I'm I'm back to swoop do. What you don't like it? My wife just walked in. You don't like it? I think it looks nice. It looks nice, but I, on the sides, it's gonna get a little long. You're gonna get Are you gonna cut it? Sides. I'm not. Here, get on the get on the microphone over here. Get your get Are your you gonna headphones. take a chance? I I don't know what we should do because I've seen all these bad haircuts exactly. lately because people are cutting them at home. I kinda yeah. want a bad haircut. 
No, they need to do that now. I want to do what Dan Cummins' uh, son did, and I think I want to comb it straight down and then cut it. Yeah. Bowl no. cut all the way around. Let and it grow out. And I'm just going to rock it. Because then when this is all done, it's going to take John forever to get your hair. No, John's to- John's a pro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows what he's doing. He can make anybody. If he can yeah. make the muffle lot of the big yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. young Homer Simpson haircut that Tom had look good. The, what was it? The D head. Stooge. The stooge. Yeah, yeah. If he can make that look good. And yeah, he only one took cut. one cut. Yeah, yeah. Carson Daly's son cut his hair on the air yesterday, like shaved it bald. On I didn't the know air. he had oh a God. son. Yeah, he I has didn't four either. kids. I they had just no had... idea. Wow. Yeah. Here's a fun fact. A- Andrea had Carson Daly broadcast live from the, her backyard. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember the party. It was... Yeah, yeah, with Willa Ford. <laughs> I want to <laughs> be bad. But yeah, I like. I know Mike had a friend come over, Austin come over and like mohawk himself. Oh, like yeah, Mike Aiello, yeah. our buddy Mike. He got a night. Nice, that's a. It was actually a pretty it's good a haircut. Decent haircut. Yeah, Austin knows how to cut. But some I'm hair. nervous about. Yeah, your hair's gonna get jacked. Oh, hey Caesar, Caesar's here now too. And then Caesar's gonna get jacked too because his hair is. Well, he's already kind of bushy. Yeah. <laughs> what about the boys? What are because... you gonna do about you? Because that's going to start you, coming into your face. You're going to get the muffalata. You're going to you grow would, it out. I would never cut my hair if I didn't need to do business or whatever. And right now, uh, it's a perfect excuse never to cut it. So <laughs> you're going to, like, grow the Fabio? I just, I'm going to, well, it, eventually. You'll probably yeah. wear the headband. Grow long and then wear a. And then ama- donate it. And then wear an amazing Jonathan headband. Uh, eventually, Liberty by, be back open and uh, yeah. I'll go there. But for the foreseeable future, like I'll probably, once my hair gets long enough, I'll probably go revert to headband, uh, Tom and Dan headband. I wear yeah. it when I get home anyway. I do too. Let's, so, yes. So, let's just say, don't both of you, don't cut your hair, and let's see where this goes. Yeah. Oh, I had to cut my sideburns this morning. Well, I, I used my beard trimmer, and I, I just that. edged. I didn't. I, I just gave them a line, so they don't have the long, I don't want Scragglies, the, yeah. like, Hasidic, uh, you know, Jewish man, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. swirly <laughs> cork, you know. Yeah, I had to, like. Long burns. I, yeah, I don't want the long burns. He's going to long burn it. You're going to long uh-huh. burn it. Well, well, he has gray burns. Gray burns. Long, yeah, yeah. Hasidic, gray. <laughs> grow out pork chops. I know. Oh, yeah, God, grow some pork chops. Yeah, and then you can, uh, and then wear During sunglasses. During this whole thing, you should be like Get experimental. Yeah, yeah. Get your headphones, mama. The uh, consistency y- of my beard is horrible. Y- and uh, grow it's pork gross. chops. Yes, mm. and then wear checkerboard or white sunglasses, and you can be the lead singer of Real Big Fish. <laughs> I uh, uh, do it. I, and then who am I gonna? Who am I gonna do my hair as? Poof it out. Do I grow my beard or shave it? Do Kenny Powers oh, grow your beard. You know what I you know what I threatened to do and Tom freaked out? I threatened to shave clean and then shave my head clean. Oh god. No. Uh, so yeah. and then maybe shave my eyebrows. You look like a penis. <laughs> so I'm penis man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't do that. Yeah, Maisie right. would freak out. She did say you could keep the the yeah. mustache, right? Yeah, Maisie said I could have a goatee. I asked her, and she said, you could cut the sides that you have to leave the beard, like right, the, right. the mustache and the beard. You're going to go uh, 90s oh, uh, yeah. friends? During, <laughs> we, we could bleach your hair during this yes. time, too. Go back super 90s. I want to bleach it and then do the bowl haircut so I look like Stuart from Mad TV. <laughs> yeah, uh, That's what I want. I um, Like a little child. <laughs> Once uh, the problem is you start doing the crazy <laughs> things and then it's like, oh, you lost it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then the pandemic's over and you have to go out in public like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah. true. What, what else okay. do they say? Well, I'm sorry. I didn't. Yeah. I only said the uh, subject line. I know, never even we, got to the email. We went crazy. Uh, it says out of work barbers and hairstylists need income and we can probably do house calls within reason. Maybe do a BDM thread page for us. I like that. Yeah. 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 yeah I know that uh, our, good, our, our friend, uh, our good friend, Melissa Soroka, I know that. Right now, you can buy gift cards uh, from her, and that's how she's trying to, you know, prop products up, prop up her yeah. business. Yeah, products and stuff like that. But yeah, like they've they've already said, um, and I, eventually we'll get to a point where somebody says, like, yeah, within reason, you can do house calls. You just got to change your protocol a little bit and be a little uh, a little less casual than maybe you were, right? And I, I think yeah, you yeah. kind of have to do that under the radar because of their right. licensing is not. Right. You're not supposed to be doing it's that. It's a right. be cool bro scenario. Don't right, broadcast right. it on yeah. social media. <laughs> not everything yeah. right. has to be on there. That's the thing too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, people. I don't know. It, it's like people are compelled to put what they're doing on social media, and then when they get a bunch of hate, 
they're like, why? And then they an argument starts. And like, well, why'd you even put it on Don't social put media? Your like, out it there. just, uh, you know. Uh, Take it into the DMs. Yeah, yeah. Rich, uh, yeah, yeah. Rich in our Twitch chat room says, to always I, advertise what you're doing. He says, I think that is irresponsible right now. Just let your hair grow. It's fine. Yeah, Rich, we weren't talking about right now. We're talking about when they say we can't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Relax. It's, yeah, yeah. it's all good. Um, I, yeah. Again, be cool. Yeah. I do know some hairstylists are doing like little touch up kits. Like if you're a woman and you have grays that are coming right. through, they're like, my one friend is using her um, food saver to like make little bags and with a little brush. And so you can get rid of your grays if you're so oh, yeah, inclined she, to do she that. She drops them by, right? Yeah. And she'll like drop was, them on the porch. I thought that was a cool idea. Yeah. She's using the food saver to give you like the color or whatever you like need. Like the mix, the color and, and the little bleach. brush and everything. And they seal it up. And then like, she'll just drive by and throw it out the window. <laughs> and yeah. like, you paid for it online. It's like uh, a hair color delivery service. I think it's pretty cool. It is uh, a shame that women have to uh, be held to a different standard in our society Amen. and the uh <laughs> the what you guys have to go through to keep up the you know you know your look and well, uh, we don't want a bunch of uggos them. running around do we? Uh, and uh and That's us men can uh just literally let ourselves go so, uh, to the point of uh, you know, I mean, we don't even have to do basic hygiene and still fine. So that's, <laughs> yeah, that's great. funny you yeah. say that. Pretty unfair. Yeah. Maisie yeah. and I Thank will... God I'm a man. Because <laughs> <laughs> I will not want to be a, a woman. That's a great t-shirt. Thank God I'm a man. <laughs> Sell a lot of those. <laughs> so th uh, Maisie and I will ride our bikes around the lake here. And sh every every time we do it and there's a guy running without his shirt on, Mommy, why can he run yeah. without a shirt oh, and she hates I it. can't? Yeah. Uh -oh. Like, uh, oh, Maisie hates it. Soon should be a topless hot dog cart lady. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, I mean, a boy can dream, or at least a dad can. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Jesus. Uh, do I make her put a top on when I swing through to get a hot dog with my friends? Like, if I brought you over there, I'd call her ahead of time and be like, "Yo, Dad and you know Tom are on the way. Put a put a booby top on," as she calls them. Call a them booby top. top. Yeah. Put a booby top on. We'll swing through for some hot dogs. When you see our car get out of sight, then you can, you know, get back to business. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. But she's so mad that Yo, yeah, she, it's not equal her. opportunity. I, 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 when she, she asks why she can't. She tells her <laughs> that, I've heard you say this. Well, you answer because I think it's funny. I think your answer is funny. Well, I think I just. Because you say right now, she says right now, it's boys can only do it. Girls can't. Sorry. And then that's. And yeah, we just leave it at that. We but just leave it at that. It's hard to, yeah. Because that really is where it is, yeah, right? Yeah, it is. I mean, I don't have an answer for her. That's the truth. Uh, yeah, I yeah. can't tell her that, like, I mean. Well, in Colorado, you, uh, you could, uh, girls could do it too. You know, there's yeah. certain states that have, uh, uh, don't yeah, but, yeah, have but that they regulation don't. anymore. You're not going to see it that often, right? I don't You're not going to see some girl jogging with her boobs out. When well, no one's going to jog. That would hurt too much. Guys do. Yeah, yeah, but you don't have boobs. If you have yeah, yeah. small boobs, you could jog. Yeah, yeah, Perhaps. but it's the bigger, well, same thing with girls, uh, but it's the uh, big boobs. I mean, it just hurts, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Maybe I'll start telling her that. I'll say, mm -hmm. it's because her boobs flop around. Not a bad idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's not That's a bad also idea. true. That's not a bad idea. Because, like, even if you could, like, jog without a shirt, I imagine if your boob size you was a certain size, like, you need a sports bra right, just for pain, uh, you know, management. Uh, that uh, it Knock the breath out of you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Like, uh, it, it just, you know, for uh, Are there some men that need that? Oh, I'm, I'm sure. sure, yeah. No, 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 not up top. I'm talking, you know. Down low? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too slow. I, 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 yeah, what a certain, like, yeah, you need there's, support. There's got to be, yeah. there's gotta be a guy that, there's yeah. got to be multiple big athletes that have to have a tighter, more compressed um, underpant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because if not, they're gonna bruise their knees. Oh yeah, yeah. or it'd just be too uncomfortable. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah for sure. Um, Guys yeah. like made that. We can go. Yeah, yeah there's yeah, nothing yeah. down there. Yeah. Like a Ken doll uh, tight, running through the wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah just nothing yeah. going on. Packed together, small, tight, tight. We gotta take a break. Uh, we'll take one. We'll come back and do more. A corporate time with Tom and Dan. Right after this. Welcome to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. Samantha, our producer, is here. Hello, Sam. Hi. Um, welcome to it, guys. It is another edition of everyone's favorite show. And before that, is there anything you want to plug? Um, and I'm not talking about this show. This is not anyone's favorite show. Well, I'll plug the BDM show because this week we did uh, something similar of Quarantine Cribs with Mike Busey. 
and it was about an hour and a half of him showing his compound to us uh, and talking about getting us extorted by a Colombian pimp. Then meeting the Escobar family, then, sitting at the dinner table, um, uh, hitting on Pablo his, Escobar, uh, Escobar's brother and and niece. Doesn't he? He's like they mm-hmm. they're like friends now. Or something. It's ridiculous. It is crazy. And then there's a coat hanger involved. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's don't the best part. The yeah, don't <laughs> talk about the coat hanger. <laughs> Stained coat uh, hanger. Oh, it and, is. And it's not what you think. It's a plastic coat hanger. Uh, uh, you'll just from one have, of his Walmart shirts. Yeah, you can go to yeah. YouTube and just search Tom and Dan live or. Twitch. We're live on Twitch right now. Yeah. Twitch.tv slash Tom and Dan live. And you set up another quarantine cribs with another Orlando superstar. Uh huh. So w- <laughs> with us right now, uh, he hasn't been in studio uh, for a while yeah. because of obviously. Last time he was in here, he wore a mask the entire time like a weirdo. <laughs> yeah, Who then, knew that he actually uh, was doing it right? Uh, he, he was the. Well, he uh, had a f- the flu the week before, remember? Yeah, but, but he was on top of things. He knew what he was doing. Ladies and gentlemen, our good friend. From the jungle, MMA and fitness. You can you can't go there now, but uh, uh-huh. but you will soon. It's our good friend Seth Petrozelli. How you doing, Seth? Hi guys. Hi hi. <laughs> so Seth, let's talk about the jungle real quick because you guys are doing um, some virtual programs that you want to let people know about, right? Yeah. Well, right now we're doing all virtual classes for our members, but we're also giving away uh, free um, actual classes to non-members. That way they can get interested in and maybe part uh, taking the classes after we get back to going or uh, keep on doing the virtual classes only because we're going to offer it that full time now. Even when we go back to being brick and mortar and open, we're going to offer virtual classes because it's actually worked out really good. And we kind of figured, wow, well, why weren't we doing this before? Because we don't have to just get people in the Orlando area. We can get people all over the country. Yeah, that's yeah. smart. I mean, there are BDM <laughs> listeners that, that love you on the show that would sign up to take a class that you're doing uh, uh, you know, virtually, I know for a fact because yeah. of just people liking, you know, like, and, and hopefully that'll, uh, you know, expand a little bit. You know, I could totally see people doing that. That's really cool. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, and, and right now we got, um, if you guys just want to go to jungleorlando.com, our website, and then just send us a message and say that you're interested, we can give you all the information on what all the free ones are. Uh, we're doing them every week. We're doing like two or three a week, free, uh, kickboxing classes, Free jungle fit classes. I'm actually teaching all the jungle fit classes now. Nice. Uh, Mike Lee's teaching the jujitsu classes. So free fitness classes for me, and free jujitsu classes for Mike Lee and our kickboxing instructors as well. That's It'd awesome. Be great if you guys want to get in there and, and do that for free. Um, and where do they go again? JungleOrlando.com. Just go to our website, JungleOrlando.com, and then you guys can just send a message or email us or the contacts uh, uh, in the website. Beautiful. Just, uh, send, so send us tell that senior. tell that bird to shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you hear that? It's right above my head. Oh, it's going to get you. <laughs> do, do you guys, uh, and we're going to get started with Quarantine Crib soon, but uh, do you guys find it weird that, like, on beautiful days, like, it, like is you walk outside and you're like god it's a nice day outside and the like the weird dichotomy between it's a beautiful day and everybody wants you to stay inside yeah and then it's like wow it's a waste because usually like a lot of people are going outside anyway because they don't want to waste it well you can still go outside if you're alone running in a field you're fine or your own backyard i like to go outside nude and just start spitting wildly in all directions and (laughs) just running just running wildly but uh it's uh it is a shame that it's uh, so nice of a day and uh, and everybody seemingly is inside. So, all right, Seth, what do we got first? Uh, let's uh, let's take a look at your house. Have you been uh, primarily in, inside your house for, uh, yeah, right. for a while? Yeah, me and, me and Tracy have been hibernating in here. I, kick, I didn't kick my niece out, but look, she wanted to bring, she, like two weeks ago, two weeks ago, she goes, hey, Seth, can, Uncle Seth, can I bring my boyfriend over? I'm like, where, is he still working? Where's he been? Like, like, who's he been around? Has he been quarantining himself? Is he around people? She's like, I don't know. I'm like, no, then he can't come over. Hell no. Mm-hmm. So I think she got kind of upset and took off to my sister's house in Tampa, so she hasn't been here for about a month now. Uh, oh, oh, my God. It's yeah. breaking your family <laughs> apart. My God, I, know, this... I feel kind of bad about that, but then, but then Tracy has been here, and then she went and, like, visited her sister, like, to give her some, like, boxes or something like that. And I'm like, well, did you get close to her? And she's like, um, no, I didn't hug her or anything. And then she goes, well, (laughs) 
Well, she brought she brought some uh, some some weed over and I'm like, well, did you smoke out of the same bowl? And she goes, yeah. I'm like, you you idiot. I'm like, that's, like, that's the same thing. I'm like, you touch lips to your sister. I'm like, that's the same damn thing. So I got really mad. That'd be worse. Huh? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Uh, like, oh my like, god, yeah. a hug would have been a little better than like, I think. I like, I'm like, I wiped my credit card after I gave it to the public employee, but I did smoke weed out of the same bowl. Yeah. <laughs> Literally uh, one second after she touched yeah, it, I had her spit in my nose. <laughs> like what? <laughs> Why would you do that? Uh, Don't do that. I was very upset. And then we got in a little fight, but other than that it's been great. It's been a, it's been great just being cooped up in the house for three weeks, so it's not Well she's not worried. She's worried about giving it to her old man boyfriend. <laughs> 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 and, then, yeah, and then I feel bad because then I'm like telling her, look, this is the reason why I'm, I'm worried because I have asthma and this and that. And she's like, but you're, but you're healthy. I'm like, it doesn't matter. I yeah, asthma. I didn't know you I'm, had you know, asthma. Yeah, yeah, you better oh, be careful. Oh, you're immune compromised. Uh, I like well, that. I, also, you eat so much uh, BH that I think you're actually okay. <laughs> yeah. You might be impervious to it. Uh, I don't know. Now, my stomach has, now it's you're... Good thing stomach issues aren't aren't a symptom because I've been having lots of stomach issues these past few, this past month. Yeah, yeah. me too. Um, Holding farts back from a new girlfriend sucks. It's not something. Not me. All. We let them crank in my house. You gotta, you gotta yeah. just let them crank, man. You gotta let them roll. You'll get comfortable enough where you gotta let them roll. I've been letting them all out when she falls asleep at night. Just like hundreds of them. Just like, <laughs> hundreds <laughs> of them. Like, hundreds. My God. Just constant. Oh, God, you are. So, I've, I've missed you, dude. You are so funny. So mm. let, let's, let's go through this house because we do have limited okay. time. This is quarantine, quarantine cribs. I'm gonna, episode I'm gonna two. Turn the, I'm gonna turn the camera around now. Okay. okay. So. Okay, so this is my 1937 colonial home. It's beautiful. In Lake, in, in Lake Yellow Heights. I, uh, okay, everything you're going to see here, I, I, I did. Painted new roof. Your dad, dad did picket, that. Your dad did. New white picket fence with the jasmine growing on it. Those oh, I love great. it. Mm, so. New dog shit in my yard. Uh, we are uh, mark that. Can't uh, curse. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. No, sorry. you're good. You're Seth, good. I I noticed. Was that your tampon car in the front driveway? <laughs> no, that's that's Tracy's car. Oh, okay. They both drive. I'll they show drive you just like cribs. I will show you. You go to the car garage after. Oh, she, oh, she drives a fresh tampon. He drives a used <laughs> one. Oh. Yeah, I offered her to uh, get it deta- to get it. Uh, you guys should get matching tampon car details yeah, or decals. <laughs> All right, he's going in here. Mm. Here's, here's Rocky. You guys know Rocky. All right, so as you immediately enter, I got a... Okay, so I redid the stairs. I'm not going to tell you everything I redid. Everything in here is new. The railing and on the stairs and the floor and everything like that. Mm. So uh, we got a little lounge area to the right here where we're, I don't use this at all. I have this blocked off. I The dogs get in here, and I don't like them all over my furniture, so I have little gates so they can't come in this little room here. I, uh, okay. I, I do like you have a Mima living room. Um, yeah. but, uh, God yeah. almighty. Dude, is there plastic on that couch? <laughs> oh, my God. No, Tracy, brought, Tracy brought cats brought cats over. So I'm like, do they have their claws? And she's like, yeah. I'm like, declaw them. She's like, no. Oh, my God. God. You're an animal lover. You <laughs> oh would never do God. that. You would, I know. And, you I, would, and I forgot you, that it was p- painful. So she bought these on Amazon. They protect the couch from... Uh, I'm getting scrapped. You got up. couch protectors on there. Uh, <laughs> people. Uh, 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 I love this. This is the uh, best episode we've done. Uh, of. I like, uh, I bet a lot of our listeners <laughs> expected you to have a very. Bro like, house. And yeah, he yeah. does not. He has a Mima house. Like, I was thinking of more of a real world, too. <laughs> you know, yeah. A, a colorful. True star. I have a very nice house. Highlighter bottle. I wanted the palm chair yeah, that yeah. you uh, <laughs> that that used to be sold at like Spencer's Gifts. Yeah, yeah. A lot of posters. A lot of neon. So far, you got a couch cover oh, and a meemaw <laughs> living room oh, with uh, with tiny <laughs> little dog <laughs> doors. <laughs> mm-hmm. This is where I quarantined, Muffy. These are my couch and this, covers. And this is the uh, the. Uh oh. This was a little this room that I turned into room that I posted on the BDM page that everyone made fun of me for saying your that pillow was... room no this is like your smoking room oh yeah, yeah your weed smoking uh... yeah. Mike Busey has a pillow tent if you're interested yeah, you, might yeah. Wanna... you guys are very similar except his place looks zany and crazy your place honestly looks like an old lady's did we lose him <laughs> I think I think uh, we lost uh, him did we, we gotta call him back I know. is he calling back right now oh, something's happening the aliens I... got him the... Wait. Oh, he's there. I, uh, there what was that? Did I yeah, you're, you're, you're good. You're yeah. cutting out. You're cutting out. Your uh, people internet's cutting out. So, uh, <laughs> this particular... Sorry, that's my chill room. Ah, okay. The chill room. The chill zone. Stephen that's Kramer has a chill zone. Mm. And uh, this oh, is where you uh, smoke weed and... Uh, you know, fondle yeah. your girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. Consensual. Yeah. Okay, okay. We'll go. We'll go this one first. Um, 
Yeah. So, right, so now uh, I'll go through. Uh, I'll go through the front door again, so, and then we'll go through. I'll go upstairs last. Oh, okay, that's Door. where the magic happens. I want to see inside yeah. your refrigerator. Yeah, see let's what look kind in that of... fridge. Yeah, yeah. yeah, get us so in there. So this is my kitchen that I redid. That's a nice looking kitchen, man. That looks dope. I redid all the cabinets and fridge and. Hang on, just, you got any crystal in that fridge? Okay, I'll open the fridge up. Hang on. I love it. It's it's beautiful. What kind of fridge you got there? I've been I'm in wow, the market. You're stocked, and... Wow, you're man. It's organized too. Look how well organized. Right. Oh yeah, organized stock. Okay, so we got. I'm not going to go through it. We got the healthy berries. got some grapes. got some uh, 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 raspberries in there, I think we got. Think, yeah. Got some a lot pineapple of guacamole. It makes your, uh, yeah, it's good for the enzymes. <laughs> but, but, oh, oh, yeah. I know, oh, I know why he's got a ton of pineapple. What a – you are a deviant. Instantly, when I see your fridge, I think worst fridge to open up when you're drunk in the middle of the night looking for a, Nothing in there. Yeah. a yeah. bunch of avocados. I, I saw and... some Publix Green Wise <laughs> mild salsa. That ain't going to cut <laughs> oh, it, man. The that's a meme. That, that is so meme. That's what my mom eats. She's like, this Publix Green Wise mild is very spicy. <laughs> Come on, man. That's oh, good. Man. That is grandma <laughs> salsa. Uh, so, so far, <laughs> I'm going to start calling you Grandma Petrozelli from <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, Seth. You got a, a real grandma house. <laughs> it's, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. About this, it's nice and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Everything. beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but it's not like I wanted yeah. a party. Oh, oh here we go. Oh, the yeah. first pro thing I've seen is a black pool table. <laughs> yeah, with a skull on the wall. All right, now we're getting somewhere. Well, this is my view. So this is my kitchen. This is the view from outside. That's my beautiful, kitchen. man. That's I, cool. I love the view. That's that's you have a dope house, man. That is lovely. And then, wait, I'll go to the right. This is my dining area where my where I have family gatherings with my family. Okay. With, with all my pictures of my family on my wall. Uh, too bad you turned your back on them and sent them to Tampa. <laughs> <laughs> this is a cool, my mom got me this for, for Christmas. I think it was awesome. It's a trash can and a recycling bin, but it's made to look like furniture. I, oh, I, I like, like that. that. I, I like that. that. I like that. Wow, that's like something my grandma would have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's so, nice. I, mean, I, yeah. I even have a grandma clock. That <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Grandma uh, clock. Yeah, it's yeah. a beautiful okay, house, so man. You walk around here to this area in the back here. So this is like a little, this is my buffet. So whenever I have like dinners and stuff, I have like my buffet set up on this. Nice. Side. Yeah, so, that's dope. Here. I like you got uh, China Hutch where all your uh, figurines go <laughs> It's a curio. It's a curio. Yeah. All he keeps all his hummels in there. <laughs> yeah. See a lot of hummels and vases. Yeah. Balls. Uh, and yeah. little. Let's see, I got my my books are Atheist Universe, The Origin <laughs> of the Species, and a Book of Five Rings. There's there's, there's some good books in there. Okay. Oh, what a library! Mm -hmm. He's got a plant yeah. inside his curio, oh. <laughs> which is like. Is that a stained glass window? Oh. This is from this is oh, okay. Listen, grandma. This is from a <laughs> yes. that that's mega grandma alert. <laughs> Guys, listen. This is from a church that was demolished in 1910, right down the street from this house. So this is an original uh, piece that was in in a church that was demolished in the 19 mm -hmm. in 1910. Mm -hmm. so you know who loves uh, stained glass churches? <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not helping, you are You're not like, hey, whoa, whoa. What? Before you call me grandma, this is an original stained glass piece from the 1900s. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, that's what we're laughing uh -huh. about. <laughs> we're not laughing that it came from uh, Conor McGregor's mansion. <laughs> a, These know, like, pearls were owned by Lady Bird Johnson. <laughs> <laughs> we know. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're laughing about. Uh, so, uh, oh, wait. I forgot to rush up the door. It, it's oh, he left the door open. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, okay. well, that, no, that's fine. There's cat. There's the cats in here. Okay. So, okay. so far, uh, it's very meme up until we get to this little drop down yeah, room. The where bro room. It seems like yeah, the, the last so bastion of your broness is uh, holding out in here in the pool table. Oh, uh, those windows are amazing, man. Yeah, they're uh, one of the one of the um, grids kind of broke off of that one. I gotta I gotta fix that. But this is where. Okay, so before all this crap happened with the virus i had plans this month to put in so when i go out here i'll show you there's going to be an outdoor an outdoor kitchen like right here with a pergola hanging over it and this is my deck the giant deck that i built back here oh you could put uh, a band on there i got a pergola oh, yeah, hook i got, up, by I the got way. this set up here for that where i have parties that's where my dj goes right there on do that. uh do you have a candy dish in your house anywhere <laughs> A what? A candy dish, perhaps with peppermints. He doesn't eat candy, though. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so, so, the, so no. before this happened, I'm going to put a big pergola over top of this whole deck. 
have it all um, enclosed or at least a, a roof on it. Oh, I love it. And again, if and you're my, if you're listening to like, this on the radio and you want to see it, you can just go to our YouTube channel, search Tom and Dan Live, or find us on Twitch, twitch.tv slash Tom and Dan Live. Yeah, yeah. It's a lot better if you're only listening to audio. I understand the, the people on the radio and podcast are going to... You know, want to check out the audio or the video accompaniment of this. Now uh, look down at your pool again. Is that where you do your wa- water aerobics with the ladies? Yes, that, this is where I do my I do nice my poses pool. and stretches for good camp for good uh, pitch right here. I, I pose on that and I get really good pitch from this angle about right here. Okay, he's got a a, a beautiful uh, mural. And yeah, uh, again, uh, the pool table and the mural only non meme all thing you yeah, got so yep. far. Yeah. Uh, and I got a koi pond with my turtles in here. There's oh, my turtles. turtle pond. All right, where, where the are mural, your turtles? You almost have a, the outside. The sure. mural almost a, it's inching into Tijuana Flats territory. <laughs> <laughs> you know? uh-huh. Here comes the turtle. Hang on, he's coming up. He's waving at the turtles. Oh, they come up when you feed them. Yeah, um, they come up to me when I feed them, but I don't have my... Oh, he's hiding back there. What do you, what what do you feed there your here. turtles? I got three turtles in there, and this is the, I won't go through the whole backyard because I want to go upstairs and show you upstairs, but the backyard area. Oh, you that's, got, you that's got a lovely. fire pit, uh stage. Oh, yeah, I got a couple fire pits. I got a fire pit there, and I got a fire pit in the middle of the, of the deck, and then I got, this thing here is a fire, like a little, you know, chair fire pit thing that I got going. Now, Give me. how often do you use your fire pits because- It's uh, Florida. I, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not only is it Florida, but I have owned a couple fire pits in my life <laughs> because I thought they were fancy, just like you, uh, apparently. And uh, never use them once. I've used it uh, maybe a couple times just to burn documents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, uh, I use it a lot. In the Sam, it that's a lot, amazing. Like, especially this time, I used it a lot. All right. All right. All right. Uh, okay, so I'll go upstairs or back up here. So that was my little. Well, that they, table you're table. outside. Be uh, honest. When's the last time you played pool on that pool table? I've never played pool. I've, I think I played pool once in three years. I, it's for it's for my guests. So mm. I know what it's for. Oh. <laughs> I've and, seen uh, the video. Guys, this is a basement. I'm not going to go down here because I don't feel like wasting the oh, time. Oh, is that where you tried to kill your father? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a, it's a basement. It goes under the whole house. Which is oh, that's the cool. one. Is that, that a doo-doo bucket in yeah. the floor? No, that's the flood bucket. Yeah. Remember? Uh, Dude, this door's the one-car garage, and then I'll go show you the, the two cars back. Oh, and then... This is the original flooring from the 30s that I left. This is the only flooring I left, but I thought it was cool. Oh, yeah, yeah it's, it's definitely cool. So I left that. Very meme though. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I knew I knew you were say that. <laughs> okay, so then I'll go, I'll go upstairs. All right. What's down so, in that I'll... basement? Uh, <laughs> you don't, you don't want to see what's yeah, down yeah. in that basement. I, uh, I yeah, I just, there's uh, a lot of stuff down in there. I mean... Uh, <laughs> it's a tapestry of nightmares. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I just feel like uh, there's something down there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So when you come up the stairs, Teens you go to the left, up. you go to my office and then my, my master, which I'll show you, and then you go to the right, and it's uh, three spare bedrooms with two full baths. So where would and we stay? Th- I see that you're, uh, you you mm-hmm. have your uh, house set on a sensible 73 degrees. Oh, yeah, but it's usually – the one downstairs is like on 65. <laughs> yeah, I can see the windows That's, fogging up near the pool. And by office, yeah. you mean the room you hammer hand in, right? <laughs> yeah. you're not, I mean, this is, this is going to be um, like a, a spare bedroom they haven't done yet, but Tracy put her stuff in here. It's going to be like her little paint room because she paints and does art. Yeah, and she's a great like artist. Art. So I got um, all my suits and stuff like that. All my – Oh my, oh my god! Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! He just opened right. a closet. That's, That's the way. funniest thing you've ever done. How long should be <laughs> there? You, you we started help this, her. We she's started been, this ten minutes she's late. Brought, she, yeah. And you put on the phone hour. with you for twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so explain what we just saw on Twitch. Uh, okay, we. Uh, so he's got the girl. He's going. He's going through sets. Going through the room uh, that Tracy's gonna uh, his girlfriend's name is Tracy she is uh, tied up in the closet in her paint room and it's, we're, it's we're she's oh my god <laughs> and for that sure that poor girl puts up with your shenanigans for sure yeah. she's, no they're men for each other because <laughs> anybody that's willing to tie herself up and put herself in the closet for the, for the joke you know you guys yeah. should just get married right I, now I, I, for but, sure she's texting her friends uh, <laughs> my boyfriend's making me do this stupid bit for this old man right here sure. <laughs> yeah. He has me tied up in the Mima closet. <laughs> it is a small closet, it's a, it's, too. It's something called radio. Uh, I don't know what it is. Uh, <laughs> that's the funniest right, thing you've ever done. <laughs> so this is, <laughs> this is uh, my office area where I got my infamous, where I do all my all my work throughout the day. This is where I sit for hours and hours a day. 
and do work. Oh, I'm sure. Sure. By the way, Seth, that's, that's why that's why you said you were ten minutes late. You had nothing to do at your actual uh -uh. gym. Yeah, he was, was tying her up. <laughs> you were trying to set yeah. up this pit, right? Uh, for sure. <laughs> hey, look, hey, look. I need hey, ten minutes to tie my girlfriend up, throw her in the Mima closet. I do have a degree. Uh -huh. Hey. Uh, of what is it of now? It's the same degree that uh, Daniel has, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Interdisciplinary studies. Uh, Frank Gore has? What is it? <laughs> no, like? Bachelor's in Science and Psychology. psychology. Oh, that's cool. Uh, uh, yeah, so you could be a... Uh, yeah, so you're a Dexter. <laughs> or, exactly. or a substitute teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. well, so I, I, put the, I put the barn doors on here. So as you go through my office, this is my wash and dryer in there. This is my master bedroom as you come through here. Mm. And that's man and in the crate right there. Aw, cute. So oh, this is nice, got, man. Yeah, all of your travel pictures. Yeah. Is that a go kart? So I, got, I, got, I got skylights <laughs> up there. What is that on the floor? It's is a that a machine or something? That's no, that's my stretcher. I, 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 what my New Year's Eve or my New Year's resolution last year was to do a split, and I didn't do it, so I got to keep going. And uh, hold so on, do you get on that thing and then you turn the wheel and it? Yeah. John yeah, Claude Van Damme. <laughs> and it, and it, and oh my God! I've never even seen that. Why does it have an aggressive? <laughs> uh, spread you open. An aggressive you. black <laughs> fist punching me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like aggressive searching. <laughs> First we're gonna open you, then we're gonna punch you. <laughs> so this is my room, and then here's my closet, which is I really like my closet a lot. I'm trying to grow my trunk of closet. It's a really big closet with. My skylight and it goes all the way back. Yeah, that's nice, man. Is that, nice a, is that an Indian uh, now, flask or jug? What is that? Have you given Where? your girlfriend? Oh, I've traced one of Tracy's purses. Oh, oh, like that's a... how, oh, that's how oh, we get it. I got these to match my car. Tampon I got those shoes. custom made. Oh, cool. <laughs> you got oh, tampon yeah. shoes? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, he told you this a couple of weeks ago, like uh, right before we didn't see him anymore. He said he got custom made tampon shoes to match his tampon car. Yeah, yeah I thought he was a joking around. <laughs> <I didn't know laughs> that was he doesn't joke around. Uh, uh, he really doesn't. Whenever Seth says something, chances are it happened. By the way, oh, soon yeah. I'm, I'm half this closet will be your girlfriend's. By the way, it starts with the hanging yeah, up yeah. her purse. She's like, I'm just gonna put this right here. Mm -hmm. That's how the virus starts. Right. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> and then, it's, you guys and then see the coolest thing, the oh, coolest yeah. thing that I installed in my house when I was doing when I was doing it. Watch this. All right. Uh yeah. Oh yeah, those are nice. Yeah, you need to get those. Oh, uh, that's uh, that's high dollar right there. Yeah, I, those uh, are nice. Yeah, that was that was that was a little expense, but yeah. it was worth it because it's so cool just to press a button and have this go up, and then you got my the pool view down there with my little balcony. But but is it thirty eight hundred dollar cool? <laughs> you know, because yeah. I, I have an I idea know. of what the uh, those things cost. I waste or... my stimulus on it. <laughs> <laughs> so that's for uh. That 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 right there is my two car garage with the mother in law suite above it. That that um, building back there. So I rent the top part out, and the bottom is my garage. So you do have a tenant there. Uh, yeah. Do they have access to the pool and to the um no, the, to no, the they, stretching they machine? They don't. <laughs> they don't. But the person that's in there now, I let him because it's my good friend. So I let him use the pool whenever he wants. But he doesn't use it much at all. So. Yeah, yeah. But the two tenants I had before, I don't let them. I don't let them use it. So here, I'll show you the the next. I'm going to turn, turn the light on in here. And then they got, I got another balcony for the bathroom, which is kind of weird. I don't ever use the balcony on the bathroom. And I would. Got, I mean, if somebody's on the pot, you just here. open up the balcony. and Let's see that shower drain. See what you've stomped down there recently. <laughs> it's a nice shower. Yeah, it's a really nice shower. Yeah, I read it. it's, a, it's a steam room and a shower. So I put the glass all the, that goes all the way up. So that way. And there's my badass robo toilet with the with the. This is the best toilet ever, guys. I'm sorry. That's okay. like what you're doing in your shower, right, Tom? Well, like you're doing like a glass wall kind of yeah, like that? But not that not nice. like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a goddamn uh, almost uh, half the size of my bedroom. That's a, yeah. that's a new yeah, room. Yeah, yeah. He's got a new room right. chair yeah. in there. Yeah, I have a skylight, a skylight in the Oh, that's in the cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's Dang, that, you got a nice house. That's that uh, Punch and Kimbo 20 years ago money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, 20 years there's ago, I'm, I'm working. There's, uh, the steam, there's the steam that comes up right there, and there's the controls. That's the controls for it right there. Oh, so wow. That's, yeah, that's fancy town. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 20 years ago, I was uh, making uh, 22 grand a year as a monster's intern. Oh, yeah, that's a $22,000 shower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, listen, yeah. I just redid my bathroom. It is not even one-tenth as nice, <laughs> and I'm just putting the money together. Okay, Seth, no offense here, but now I'm looking at your house. You got a nice-ass house. Yeah, dude. Obviously, uh, like, 
just nicely decated and a not good part of town. You got some uh, so a, a, a rental artifacts. house uh, back. There. You got the blinds, the bathroom, double that, garages. Uh, you know, you're a good looking gentleman. You're Girlfriend fit, in the closet. Good uh, personality. <laughs> the, the fact that you're not married tells me that uh, you're there, the problem. There's, there's, <laughs> a, there's some deep dark <laughs> secrets that uh, once they get to know you, that we're not seeing as a bad man. <laughs> I mean, some serious uh, flaws there. There that uh, I'm not seeing because something's wrong. You seem like a catch to me. Uh, it seemed like uh, there should be girls uh, beating their, your door down here. Um, I mean, well, I, I mean, it, it, yeah, it's, it's definitely me. <laughs> yeah, wow. Damn, well, it's not your beautiful house most, and your, your physique. I mean, this is flawless. probably the most intimate quarantine cribs we've ever recorded. I mean, we're, uh, we're really. By the way, I'm sorry we glossed over that toilet. How good is, because it's a regular toilet, but it just has the attachment. It's got heat. It's got a blower. It's got water. So, so you, I got the, it's um. The whole the whole seat of your normal toilet comes off, and this new seat goes down. So it's not just the attachment; it's the seat that goes on it as well. And then it plugs in, and then it's a bidet. And what else does it do? It it, it has a heated seat, so it's heated. It's a warmer for your butt, so it's like nice and warm as you sit on it. It's not cold when you sit on it immediately, which is nice. I like that. Uh, and, and it sprays. It's got a butt wash. It's got a front woman's area wash, uh -huh. and then it's got it's a, a front and butt. it's got a dryer. Oh, it's got a dryer too. Yeah. yeah. So it shoots hot air up your butt too to dry it yeah. off, so you don't have to use toilet. two fireplaces. It's also like got uh, it's yeah, also got, got a yeah, straightener got a for your BH no, hairs. <laughs> one is a, uh, one's like a little air that had like they had like the stereo and stuff, which is obviously outdated. So I just converted it into like a little uh, okay. uh, display. Yeah, and like then the that's the gas fireplace right there. Nice it's gas cool. fireplace. And then I, dude, it took me three days to do this. This so this brick was the same color brick as upstairs. I don't know if you saw that. Yeah, the brick in my room. And I had to, I whitewashed this. It took so long to whitewash it. It's a, it was a pain in the butt to, to do that. It that looks was good a, though. What, what do you, what do you whitewash it with? Like uh, chemical bleach type of deal? I had three buckets. I had one bucket was just a uh, washcloth with water. One was like with half paint, half water. And another was a dry rag. And then I would just go over each, like one by one section with, with each of those, like one by one. Like, so it's gotta be wet it. I wet it first. Then I scrub it with the half, half paint, half water. And then I dry it real hard with a, with another rag, and I did that for each each little section, which was a, kind of a pain in the butt. Hey, yeah, it, it looks, looks good, good though. though. It looks amazing. Yeah. And now here I'll go straight real fast. So this is the well, this is this is like this is a whole other area. This is my one car in the in the front, and then this is like a little shed. It's under air, and there's like a shower back here too. So it's like a little. I just use it for storage now. Yeah, that's a nice uh, looking. Uh, my, my, neighbor, my neighbor uses it for different things too. Yeah, like, yeah, I can see. Kim lab mm -hmm. going yeah, on yeah, there. Yeah. 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 Math in there. <laughs> like, God. I'm the one you who. You got knocks. a maintenance man shower. That's <laughs> nice. <laughs> so this is where he enters for his his one one up here. Is that his hammock is, uh, he sleeps in? Wait, no, that, no, that's just the. I just have this blocking so when you walk out of the garage, you don't get wet. It's like a little. Oh, that's nice. Part. A little tarp. I gotta clean the leaves off it though. Yeah, Water man. can get through that. <laughs> uh, yeah, but not as much. Sam, smartass. <laughs> <laughs> it looks like it just uh, caught. Uh, yeah, that's a you metric said, ton a of pollen. <laughs> you sleep in this pollen cot, you idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and this is where my this is where the tampon is. Yeah, got a lot of bikes. He's a bike. Yeah, I got. So this is a regular bike. This is like a little motorized bike, and then you got my motorcycle here. Nice. Have you guys seen the custom paint on this one? Yeah, it's got a lot of D's hidden in it, right? <laughs> no. Is that a gorilla have, with flames coming? Pink oh, flames. A flame gorilla. Oh, no. <laughs> this gorilla is flashing. He's like spreading his arms and he's flashing his way. Mm -mm. All right. Very yeah. classy. Yeah, that is. Uh, <laughs> that screams D. <laughs> and then you got, and then you got my tempo. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. 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 It is nice. Uh, you and Daniel have been a keep the car in the garage. Uh, yeah. And man, I'm it, a garage guy. Yeah. It, it keeps it, the car nice. Been, yeah, yeah. My my uh, WRX has fallen to disrepair, but the <laughs> amount of pollen. Oh, it just goes crazy. I open up the trunk and there's leaves lining packed in there, and I'm just like, it's yeah, garbage. You gotta now. dig this out. <laughs> it's just well, like, it'll, it'll, I ruined it. It'll plug your drain. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. The water drains. Yeah, already, yeah. yeah, it's impossibility. It's already ruined. Well, thanks for your time and for letting us, uh, you know, check out your crib, dude. Go, that, check, uh, go, <laughs> help, your, go help your girlfriend. She's still in the yeah. closet. Is she okay? Yeah, I don't know where she, I told her. I told her to come out. I don't know where she went. Oh, my <laughs> God. I hope she's still in there asleep. <laughs> Let's hope she's go. asleep. Mm. Let me go see her.
my god. I mean, just, if she's still playing along with me, that, then she, that'd be really good. Dedicated. Okay, Seth's going upstairs. And if you want to check this out again, Tom and Dan Live on YouTube, Tom and Dan Live on Twitch. Seth, turn on your uh, toilet. I want to see the uh, power. And Oh. oh she's she's scared. She? She's scared. <laughs> Get her. These are, these are all spare bedrooms and spare bedrooms. Release the dogs. <laughs> Release um, the house. So this um, is another spare bedroom that I got going on. Damn, man. Nice ass house. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's 6,000 square feet, so it's got a lot of. Oh, it's huge. Yeah, yeah, well God done. God damn. Yeah, well done. Did, uh. I don't know where she's at. Tracy. Uh, sure uh, she how to finally punch. left you. <laughs> <laughs> she's like, I'm back in my thing. <laughs> Starting with this purse that looks like right. an Indian canteen. <laughs> Uh, go turn on the toilet, Seth. I want to see her. On the toilet. Oh, there she is. She's hiding in the other closet. Hey. Hey. I do. She's saying hello. Yeah. Oh, she was coming out of another closet. Oh, <laughs> all the closets. Okay, yeah, I'll go. I'll go to the toilet. Hang on. Yeah, we'll end with the toilet because we yeah. do have to take. I a just want to see the power in which the water. Because I'm, well, I'm in the okay, market. This is the trick, though. You have to have your weight on it to to do it. You have to have weight on it to. To make the mechanism work. I see well, a, I can't I see a crumble. I see a Look. crumble in there. Yeah, push down uh, with your wash, muscles. I'll push, I'll push <laughs> wash on, which is a little butt wash. Okay. And it won't work because there's no pressure on it. But once there's pressure, there's a hey, crumble you in put there. your knees you on there. there. Yeah, yeah. There's a crumble in the bottom. Put, you didn't no. flush. Press, press, was... <laughs> press down with your hand. I want to see. <laughs> you're you're so dirty dirty foot. Watch. Ready? Yeah. Ready? yeah. Okay. Right. There it goes. Oh, oh, that thing's what? dirty black. It's, wow, I didn't know it came out like I that. I also didn't know it was jet black. That thing <laughs> needs to be, you need to clean that thing. That's, wow. That's the, mold, that's the mold. That There's mold all over it because I need to. It's what? It's you spray, get a moldy butt wash. It's spraying mold? You don't want pee. that in your That's going to get that's you sick. That's what I'm worried about. Uh, that's going to get you sick. That's Corona. It's spraying, <laughs> spraying moldy spraying water. You're spraying straight Rona right up there. <laughs> You're going on your roids. You're right. You got rotaroids. <laughs> also, it scared me. I thought it was a snake. It's <laughs> <laughs> it like a can. It's like opened up a can of peanuts and two uh, two spring snakes flew out. It, it's like the minority reports. Look at you. I'm all wet. Dude. Good for a camera it. mount. <laughs> <laughs> it's spraying moldy butt water on your pink shorts. Oh my god. Uh, all right, all Seth, right. We well, gotta get out of here. Oh man, um, that was super fun. You I, are hilarious. Dude. Again, if you want to take virtual classes at the Jungle, just go to what website? Go to jungleorlando.com and then just uh, click, just send a message. There's a contact us button. There's yeah. our, our email on there. So just send us a message saying you're interested in doing the free virtual classes. We have kids' classes. The kids' classes are exploding. Um, we had like five or six uh, new people a day just doing it for free, uh, trying it out, say, in addition to our regular little gorillas. So if your kids are just sitting around not doing anything, I mean, they need time to kill. Like, this is a great, yeah. great way to get them to get physically fit, to do some exercises, to get some, you know, of that energy out. Um, just, it's just great. Plus, our instructors are really good. Felicia's doing it as well still. She's, she's still teaching a lot of them. Nice. So, And speaking of that, Seth, is uh, have they told Felicia, like, I guess all the fights have been uh, postponed indefinitely, but uh, will she'll eventually... I mean, they haven't, they won't like redo the card, will they? Or uh, how does that work? Uh, I don't know if, what I'm allowed to say right now, but I know that uh, he is actually, he's still wanting to have the fights. He's talking about, I don't know if you guys saw on the news or not, trying to get a private island. Yeah. Uh, I was, was going to bring that up. I was going to bring that up next segment. Yeah, they're talking about doing them on a private island of some sort. Not really. Yeah. But he also has a Indian reservation secured. Um, and I don't know if it's going to be for the next three cards, which Felicia is on. So they might do that one as well. I think it's in Cali. Um, I don't know. I'm honestly nervous about it. Cause I don't, I don't, I know there's not going to be an audience, but I still, we're going to be on a plane. We're going to be around people. Sure. As long as he tests everybody, I'm, I'm totally cool with it, but I'm, I am kind of nervous about being around people and like traveling and stuff yeah. right now. That's, you should. Be. I would think you'd have to. Yeah. I think in order to pull that off, I think you'd have to accurately test everybody and be responsible. You'd have to do that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And so as of right out. now, we're not getting any news. Felicia gets the news, and then she lets us know. Um, but as of right now, it's still on. They haven't changed anything. There's just rumors of it being uh, either in Florida or or Cali. We're trying to get it in Florida because two of the people are in Florida. So we're like doing hashtags UFC in Florida to try to get it here. So that way, it's going to be it'll be easy for us. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. And cool. Felicia's the one give me the call me an event so or the main event. So. Yep. Well, Seth, it was good talking to you, dude. Please, um, uh, Tracy, thanks for playing along, man. That was hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my God, that was funny. 
and uh, <laughs> we'll uh, we'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right, guys. Love All you guys, right. and I miss you guys a lot. Seriously. Miss you too, man. Miss you too. Stay safe. We'll we'll be in contact. I'll text you later. Okay, cool. All right, man. Later. Bye. Seth Petrozelli, live from uh, our newest. Uh, what are we calling this? Quarantine cribs. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, that was uh, super duper fun, man. It's, um, uh, it's always cool to to be able to check up on friends. That, see that that one worked out pretty damn good. He has good internet. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and it, it cut up a little. I feel bit, like we started huge. We went uh, Busey's big mega mansion. Then we went to Seth Petrozelli's mansion. Yeah, yeah. I feel like we gotta go way low oh, now. Oh, we're going to Big Tim's place next. <laughs> we, <laughs> to, yeah, that will be happening. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Are we setting that up? I already yeah. set it up. Um, yeah. Yeah. Also, That'll make you feel better. <laughs> like watching Seth is like, well, not as good. <laughs> like I wish I was stuck there. I wonder how much he paid for that house. Uh, always expensive. Uh, Plus, think, he did a lot of uh, renovations. I think, I think he scooped it up. Yeah, uh, when he could have scooped it up. That's a really nice house. Yeah, that's yeah, a dope right. house. Um, we do have to take a break, so let's take a quick one. We'll be back with more A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan right after this. Welcome back to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Dan. I'm Tom. Um, we were talking a little bit about this when we had Seth on the line. We were talking about how Dana White, um, I believe yesterday he released uh, information uh, regarding... What is it? UFC, I don't know, 259, 269, something like that. And uh, I don't know if this interview that I just found has anything to do with him wanting to fight on a private island, but they've been kicking that around, and that's kind of what Seth said. Let's see what exactly he's saying. I, that this event is going to happen. Now you have an official main event, Tony Ferguson versus Justin Gaethje. I mean, I could go a million different ways with this, but I think the, the most broad way to start it off is how did we get here? How did we get to Justin Gaethje? Versus uh, versus Tony Ferguson on well, April 18th. Obviously, everybody knows that the Habib fight fell out. You know, Habib, and I could go on for 10 minutes telling you how that whole thing fell apart. But the reality is that's nobody's fault. Every day when I got up, I think he's going to talk more about the card. But uh, it says that he's so committed that he has secured a private island to host events. Um, let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. He also says that he worked on uh, on securing an undisclosed island where he could convince him uh, conceivably book fights for international athletes who can't come into the U.S. He said, I'll tell you this. I'm close to getting this deal done. Got OK. So that's why I, I got confused of why he was doing it on the island. I was like, well, what's the difference than if you just test someone and. Do it at a in a closed in a area. Closed, yeah, 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 you because could, like, but I, he's I, talking about people with with travel bans. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can't come which in would from make Europe sense. or whatever. If it's an international sport, you're kind gotcha. of you're uh, you're, you're kind of shackled. Okay. Yeah, that makes a lot more sense. So he says, right. not uh, necessarily so, because the island is safer, or, like, safer, yeah. separated Correct. from everybody's because international people could fly to it. Makes area. sense. Okay. He says, so this place where this fight is going to be on April 18th, I have locked up for two months, so I'm going to continue to pump fights out. I also secured an island. I've got an island. The infrastructure is being built now. We're going to do it all. We're going to do our international fights on this island. So we do this fight. Um, international and in the United States, we're going to start cranking. He's like dedicated to bringing this stuff back. He's going to have to, or his company folds, right? Well, of all the sports, um, you know, this one can be done with yeah. less people involved. Uh, so it uh, seemingly easier to pull this off than any other uh, sport that involves lots of people on teams. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So. Um, yeah, I'm sure they'll do something. Here's the thing: they'll have to pivot. Every business is figuring out how to keep going and uh, and keep uh, revenue coming in in some form during this. It's what you have to do. Like you can't just be like, "Well, we'll see what's going to happen." You have to pivot and you have to start now. I mean, they have already started months ago figuring out what they're going to do. Um, and you know, businesses are thinking about like I'm. They've been talking about the NFL uh, and how they're looking at uh, how they're going to start in, you know, uh, September. Well, even, even something like the draft. And you know, I've been seeing them kicking oh, around yeah, yeah. how they're going to do the, the NFL draft and stuff like that. So it is uh, it is interesting to see who's going to be, uh, be able to do this. Um, you know, uh, it says here, ask specifically whether all athletes will be tested for COVID-19. White declined to go into details, but he said the promotion has taken all necessary precautions. I'm ready to get back. You keep people in their houses for too long without entertainment. People are going to start losing their minds, and we need to start figuring out solutions. That's what we're doing. We're going to keep everyone safe, and we're going to pull this thing off. I like that. That's that's cool. It it is kind of uh, it, the irony of like two fighters being afraid of getting uh, COVID from each other, 
but not afraid of trying to punch each other unconscious. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they, uh, it, yeah. I, it, but it makes sense. But it's you're in a uh, a ring trying to basically hurt the other person as much as humanly possible uh, with your fist, but you're like, I don't want to get a virus from yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, it's... Uh, it's uh, what sports weird. potentially uh, do you see not ever coming back? They'll all come back. It just when and how. And in different capacities. Yeah, yeah. There's just too much money involved into, uh, you know, into... Uh, what, about like, what about like, uh, you know, like your Tour de France? That'll, what yeah, about yeah, like yeah. your your ultra marathons? But are all of those people going to have to be tested before they run the marathon? Well, uh, listen, I'm no professional. I have no idea. But seemingly, based on just like what I've read, again, I don't have any clue. But uh, it looks like it's just going to be here. And the reality of the virus is always going to be with us until enough people get it and recover and get immune from it. A vaccine is created and herd immunity. As you hear the professionals talk about, like, this is <clears throat> it's not going to be something that they can totally eradicate from society and be like, all right, it's done. And then back to normal. It's going to be like we live with it. Yeah. And then as more people get it and recover, then it's just like, oh, yeah, this person had this person. is fine. And then it becomes more of a norm. And then people are less fearful. Now, the only thing that I don't see is the people that are compromised and the elderly like they're always going to be scared of getting it and fearful of going into large groups, which they should be, unless they get the vaccine, which is still like, uh, you know, yeah, a so year a away or ways longer. and ways away. So I don't foresee older people or immune compromised people or people with a bad health conditions ever being uh, comfortable with being in groups of large people until they get a vaccine. Right. Because if I mean, they, no, I agree with that. I, you know, even if they, you know, six months from now, they, you know, our company, our, our, uh, our society gets back to, you know, somewhat normal like behavior. Still, the old people like coronavirus is gonna be circulating around. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, but again, I don't know. Maybe hopefully you could eradicate it totally, but it doesn't seem like. Uh, the, uh, all the scientists yeah, believe it's, that it's going to be, be a process. Case. You know, if that even happens, <laughs> it will be a process. Well, um, that about does it for us. Um, thanks right. to Seth and his girlfriend Tracy for doing a uh, a really really awesome episode of Quarantine Cribs. Mm. That was super fun. You can watch that on YouTube. Just search Tom and Dan live. Also uh, on Twitch, if you want to catch it live, because uh, the only way you'll you'll see anything on YouTube, those are all be replays. But Twitch, we broadcast every single day, twitch.tv slash Tom and Dan live. Yeah, usually the schedule is before lunch and after lunch. It's kind of what we've fallen into. Yeah, we've been shooting and for like 10, 20, and then like, uh, what is it, like 12, uh, 50. Yeah. It's usually when things kick off. Unless it's Friday, and then it's uh, basically noon to three. You That's know, the uncensored Friday show. show yeah. um, get our app. All of our content's on there, totally free. Um, you can find out more about it, tomanddan.com. Come. Have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay inside. Uh, wash your hands and your butt. Uh, anything else? That's it. Guys, we will see you Monday. Welcome back to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Tom. I am Dan. TomandDan.com for all things Tom and Dan related, including signing up to be a BDM or some merch. That really helps out Eric, our merch guy, who, uh, man, we had so many things planned for him and we... Had to mm. cancel all of them because yeah. they were all canceled. He would be standing in the middle of the street or a field right now selling T-shirts to no one. <laughs> yeah, that would yeah. be bad. So um, one of our sponsors, White Claw, which we love and I happen Boy, to drink yeah. all the time. Um, the White Claw rep that originally yeah. made the uh, the relationship work. Was, he has since become a, a mega bigwig. He's, yeah, yeah. Uh, he left us in the dust. Was August. Now it's Steven, but uh, it was August. And throughout the getting to know August, um, you know, we he'd come by here, deliver White Claw yeah. for our events. And we, you know, we got the. He became our friend. Our great buddy, guy. Yeah. Um, and uh, he told us an interesting fact that uh, since he told me, I've been fascinated with getting this gentleman on our show to talk about this. But he told us, he's like, yeah, my uh, my dad, 
he goes around and gets pictures and autographs with celebrities, but like big A-list celebrities. And uh, he's it's kind of like a hobby of his. Yeah. And then I'm like, well, what are we talking here? And he's like, yeah, well, you get a, like, a, like the best of the best, like uh, the Tom Cruises and the, yeah, yeah. you know, the Tom Hanks. The, yeah, 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 yeah. Like the, the big, the Angelina Jolie's, the Brad Pitt, stuff yeah, like yeah. that. And I'm like, I thought what? he was kicking around with like the Pauly Shores. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, may, like maybe a, uh, you know, at, at the very, at his very peak, uh, um, you know, uh, maybe a Matt LeBlanc. <laughs> you know, at the, I mean, at the highest, I yeah, thought yeah. maybe a Matt LeBlanc. No, yeah, Gus yeah. blows that completely out yeah, of the yeah. water. And then I'm like, uh, I'm like, what? How does he do it? And it's like he's got this whole process. And this, I'm like, yeah, well, I'm like, I, we have to have him on the show. What a great hobby to have. And on the show <laughs> with us right now is Gus. How you doing, Gus? I'm doing just fine. So, um, first, uh, when did you start this? I, and actually, even before that, is there a name for what you do? Because I imagine there's probably a group of people that you're familiar with that do this kind of thing. And, uh, like, I know that uh, Daniel's wife's mom was a, a uh, sweeper. A sweeper. They, and, they do all the sweepstakes. She knew the odds. Yeah, she knew yeah. which ones to play. Oh, okay. She was very, very good yeah, at yeah. it. So is there any name? She won me 45 gas cards one time. <laughs> $5 <laughs> gas cards. Yeah. Is there a name nice. for what you do? Uh, no, I have my business that I do. I'm a d photographer mm. here locally, and then I like to go out to the events and capture pictures of the different photographer. I mean, of the different celebrities, and then try to get some of those same pictures autographed by them if I can. Okay. So I've been doing this at Gus Captures Life Photography. Okay, so oh, there you go. Gus Captures Life is that uh, is that a social media handle? Yeah. Yes, okay. it is. So when when did you start this, Gus? And uh, did you start small and work your way up? Yes, definitely. Uh, probably for the last ten years. Uh, I've always been fascinated with the movie stars. I I can go back and bore you with some stories. When I was in the military many years ago, I was out in California, and this is before nine eleven when things were. And it was before the Oscars were ever held where they were. Well, we were out for. Uh, I was coaching and teaching at the time at the Air Force Academy. But anyways, we're in California, and the Oscars is going on. So I went down to the Dor Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, and there was uh, names that some some of you will know and some won't, like uh, Cary Grant, Cesar Romero. Sure. And and Cher was there that year that she wore that crazy outfit with the headpiece that went straight up. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. You remember that? That was iconic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Yeah. So that's just got my interest, but I never did anything until about 10 years ago. And that's when I uh, started just making this into a real hobby and – now it's like an adventure all the time. <laughs> so uh, let's talk about your collection. How many different celebrities have you photographed and got their autograph? And let's go over some of the uh, the A-listers that you were able to get. Okay. Well, let's see. Where's this one list? Well, he's got a master list. I make, the, I make these for my friends. and You can't really see it that well, probably. No, it looks great. Yeah, we can see it. Does it well, those are all my photos for one year. And this is the uh, Golden Globes. So every one of those pictures, if you see Lady Gaga, so you're like the paparazzi. Uh, Julie Roberts, John Krasinski, I took all those and I give them to my friends. Uh, and, and then um, if I can, sometimes I'll try to get some of these signed. Maybe I'll get it, maybe I won't. So that's part of the fun of just doing this. And then, then, it's, it's, then the adventure begins either at different premieres or events or uh, Comic-Cons that you go to. So, oh, so you can use those to maybe get some of your own original photos uh, autographed. And then um, you also get, take photos with some of the celebrities. Is, is that something that kind of you, you piggyback into part of the, the adventure? Yes, definitely for that, for sure. Um, I made sure, I made a list of things I've got to go make sure that I highlight today with you because I don't know how much time we have. So yeah, I yeah. By. can't miss those. So, um, yeah, it's different, different things. Um, I don't know if you've got any Walking Dead fans or not. Yeah. But oh, yeah. Uh, so here's a picture that my wife took of me and Negan. Oh, wow. Morgan. And then I saw him later at his show and he signed this for me free. He just saw it. He didn't charge me anything. He just signed it for me. So that was very cool. So just fun things like that. And then so, um, so sometimes the, the celebrity will be a little more generous as far as lending their, their autograph to something. Because, I mean, I, having a photo is one thing, but having an autograph is cool, too. And are some celebrities more along the lines of like, I will only do this if you pay me? Oh, yeah. If you go to the Comic Cons, that's yeah, sadly, that's fees. how you can only get to a lot of the big names now. Like, um, 
Uh, for example, here's uh, Captain Marvel. Whoa! But I had to pay for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Because so, at the Comic Cons, yeah. that's how these celebrities make money. They yeah. charge for the autograph. Right. Sure. Which, by the way, right. would be way too awkward for me to ever do. Uh, I just couldn't. Yeah, uh, I'd have to just sign it. Yeah. <laughs> because I, of, I'm with you. That's a yeah, little weird. Yeah, yeah. I would, or I'd have to get some sort of other like minion to like make sure that the well, person knows. I, I couldn't tell like, them. Even like, when we joke hey, can around, I get a picture of him? Like, I'm, it's uh, thirty bucks. <laughs> like, even when we joke around about either having people come in here or I'll leave a voicemail message on your phone and we say like, go oh, fifty bucks. I can't charge for that. I'll just do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's a yeah. Right. Here's a fun fact. We're just gonna do it. But that's the business so it is what it is um now i know that august also said that uh you have a couple uh tricks that you've learned that uh helps you even get closer to the celebrities and stuff and we noticed by the picture that uh you have your military uniform on is that something you learned that uh like if you have your military uniform that people are more likely to like uh you know uh, trust you or like invite you and like hey come on like yeah, you know yeah. because it makes sense it does yeah i mean uh, for, for certain events i wear that only i mean i don't do it all the time it's just for the for uh like say the golden globes because everybody's all dressed up in tuxes and things so yeah, i can yeah, wear sure. that there wouldn't be something i'd wear at a premiere or anything like that so i only wear it once a year i still fit in it which is great nice. and uh, yeah it does help it does help i mean it's um i've been able to get a lot of stars to come over and talk and i find out that some of them have a uh, military in their family that's what i enjoy is the conversations more than just sometimes always getting the autograph or getting the uh, picture taken is just to have an actual conversation with them and find out, Hey, they've got somebody connected with the military and it's, it's interesting to hear those stories. So it's, it works out well. Gus, who would you say the biggest celebrity that you've ever photographed and uh, maybe taken a picture with or gotten an autograph with uh, is? Well, it's a couple different things. I mean, it just depends. I mean, um, and it depends on who you like. I mean, I'm a big country music fan. So I told my son, I got to show this because he's like, I mean, it may not be a big deal. But I took this picture of Carrie Underwood mm. and then I got her to autograph it for me. And then I got, as he calls it, my prom picture with her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's great. And that was at a fan club party. So, you know, that kind of stuff. But then um, I got uh, Arnold to sign for me at a premiere. So... And those are fun if you can get out to those things because, you know, those don't cost you anything. It's just your time. It costs you lots of time and you're dealing with the so-called, as they call them. Uh, and I've got to know some of these guys are nice people, the autograph graphers who uh, sell their autographs. So um, yeah, cause you're you competing with those guys. Yeah, you don't do that. Yours is, is strictly for your private collection, correct? And friends. Right. I'm, yeah, I've never sold an autograph once. Nope. Yeah, I see, I that. think that makes it a little different yeah. that you're out there. And, and the fact that you're having to navigate these guys, are all of the guys like nice or are some of them rough around the edges a little bit? We've gotten to know about six of them, and they're very nice. And for the most part, the people, but they can be not those same people, but others can be very aggressive. Um when I was out, we were out for the uh, Avengers Endgame premiere. I had a guy, because I'm so tall at 5'6". <laughs> so, yeah, I feel you. <laughs> so these tall guys are just reaching over trying to pass my autograph I'm trying to get signed up. And I actually had a guy jump on my back, and it broke my little uh, step stool I had because <laughs> he, he, he weighed so much. Oh, my so, God. Yeah, so and that's been probably the craziest thing. So you come away sometimes – it's like you got to really want to do this, but it was a great thing because we got to meet uh, all the cast from the Avengers except for um, Chris. Chris wasn't there. Chris Evans, but everybody else was there from wow. Chad Boswick to. That's Wayne a Bosman lot. I mean, to, that's yeah, that's huge. That's mega huge, especially for I mean, as big as that movie is. Uh, right. Uh, have you ever had a celebrity uh, just be a D head to you, uh, or like, or just deny you... your request at all? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. You know, just recently, <laughs> and I'm sure she's nice because you never know. I try to give everybody the benefit of the doubt. Maybe they were just in a bad, you know, had sure. a bad mood or had, they're in a rush to somewhere and had just get to get to that next party to get a drink. But we tried to talk to Tiffany Haddish this year at the Globes, and, man, she just didn't want any part of us. She just bugged on by. But, uh, you know, maybe there was something else going on. Um, and it's tough because sometimes, like when you're trying to get autographs, they don't know if you're really a fan versus these people who are trying to sell the stuff. Yeah. So uh, when you're at these premieres and you're mixed in with that group, that happens. I was going to ask you that because it seems like the guys that uh, sell the autographs, obviously the celebrity 
uh, doesn't necessarily. Maybe they don't care, but they'd probably be. Uh, well, they're profiting off their name. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah. They, they'd be more likely to be like, all right, I want to give my autograph or picture to a true fan rather than the guys that yeah. are just selling it's it almost online. Like, uh, I'd want to quiz them ahead of time. Yeah, yeah. And do, in in that case, do the celebrities sometimes want to personalize it because it's harder to sell? You know, like uh, do they ask who is question. two? Right, they do. And, you know, for me, I don't care. If they want to personalize it, fine. Um, and so that'll happen sometimes. They'll say, and who, what's your name? And, you know, if I forget to introduce myself or they didn't hear me when I said it. So they'll, they'll put the name on there. And that's fine. with. I've got a, lots of personalized. Like the one I showed you with Jeffrey Dean, that was, you know, personalized. And that's fine. So I don't have a problem with that. But, yeah, some of the folks, they de- definitely don't want them signed uh, for sure. Yeah, because and, that's hard for them to uh, to resell them. Obviously, when it says to John, you can only sell right. to John. To, yeah. You know, I mean, you well, you know, put it, it, it goes end. both ways because what's happening now because the autograph business has gotten so crazy with resells and stuff that some people feel that if you do have it personalized, it does show that it really was signed by them. Mm. Um, and I have photos, so we have photos taken with it, so that I can say, yeah, this was really, this really did happen. Not that I need it for, because I'm not selling them, but I just like to have that yeah. proof. Like when you're asking me, I can say, yeah, here's a picture of me having uh, somebody sign this, wh- whoever it was. Um, and then I want to mention too that uh, you know, there's all kinds of comic cons. There's the, the expensive ones, and the uh, one I like to go to is out in Hollywood called the Hollywood Show, because mm. that brings in a lot of the old timers. And what you find out when you go to enough of these, I went to 10 conventions last year. Wow. And when you go to some of these conventions, I mean, it's high powered. They're trying to get you in and out as fast as they can. You'll be lucky if you get 30 seconds with a celebrity. To me, I want to have an experience. And when I go to this Hollywood show in California, because it's the older actors who haven't been on TV maybe in a while, or they're, you know, some people might say they're past their prime, but there's still a lot of great people, Laverne, Shirley, and all those that were out. Oh, yeah. So they'll, they'll spend time and talk to you. And, you know, you might be there 10 minutes talking to the same celebrity, which is great because now you've got a great memory. And that's what it's about to me is the, the memory of meeting the celebrity. Yeah, it's nice to get the autograph, but I like to have a little bit more than just exchanging cash. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, the experience is always better. I have a, a copy of Greg Graffin, uh, lead singer of uh, Bad Religion. Yeah. He, he wrote a, a book and I had brought the book to get it signed. And uh, but it was more fun to just actually sit there and talk to him for about 10, 15 minutes. Yeah, of course. That was right. like that means so much more to me than anything. I mean, because you're right. Yeah. I got an experience, and and seeing it almost made me. And I don't know if you find this, Gus, but it almost made me enjoy him more because I got to see him as a real human being. You know, right? And that's you bring up a good point. I don't know if you're a Modern Family fan or yeah, not. Yeah, yeah. And it just ended. They they were that's all yeah. big thing in the news. So, is, yeah. So I've met Eric Stone Street three or four times now. So he even recognizes me when he sees me. But I heard him once on a radio show talking about, he says, I can tell it's a fan wants to uh, have an experience or just wants the selfie and get the heck out of there. That's how they approach him with their cameras, you know, their phones. And so he, he says, I'd much rather have a conversation with him than just the, the 10 seconds like, here, can I get a selfie? And off they go. You know? Yeah. So that's very true. Well, yeah. because they're human uh, beings too, so it's like yeah, uh, yeah. they yeah. they don't want an awkward uh, because get, well, you're having just someone using them at that point, right? You're going up, yeah. you're getting your selfie. There's no exchange of energy other than you taking something from them. Yeah, 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 yeah. nothing right. else. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. Um, and they're human beings, and they did have a life before celebrity. And getting wanting to take a picture with someone just to say you have a picture with them is an odd thing and is very rare in society. Yeah. So even them, it's it's still odd. I guess to the ultra celebrities that have been doing it for thirty years, it's yeah, probably but the selfie normal. is weird because in I don't know if Gus, you probably uh, would agree with this. It's like when you just get the selfie. I mean, self is the correct uh, word there because it's selfish because you literally are just doing that to benefit yourself or your Facebook page or Instagram. You know, there's nothing, there's no, nothing else there. Uh, yeah, it is. You know? it is I mean, like it's a... like taking your picture in front of a private plane and being like a VIP sale and it's <laughs> not even real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. There's a lot of truth to that. What happens is that when you go to some of these events is I've had to actually make posters with just the, uh, say golden globe emblem on it because let's say you're in a confined area and here comes so-and-so. Well, you just don't have time sometimes to reach down and go, Where's that picture of Tom Hanks when he's coming within 15 feet of you? 
you got to make a decision like what am I going to do and you might miss everything so you try to get a selfie instead but I'd much rather have the autograph but that's what happens in some of these things you just can't get things out quick enough when it's sure. when it's spur of the moment like that so we've had to make some decisions on some things and my wife and I work out pretty good she tries to pull things I try to get them out there and it's a, a team effort so that's why the convention sometimes even though you got to pay it's a little more relaxing than the uh, craziness of like the premieres and things like that, uh, which reminds me, I'd like to show you a picture if I could after your next question. Go ahead. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Now, yeah. Well, I was going to ask you, uh, is there any particular picture or autograph that is heralded as your most rare because the person's deceased now or there's not a lot of uh, yeah. autographs of this person? Is, like, is there any like prized possession that you have Good question. that would be considered rare in the autograph world? Well, in that case, I'll have to get up and walk with you for just a minute. Yeah, Am yeah. I not too blurred? No, no you good. look fine. You look great. All right. You'll enjoy this then. So it's a beautiful I found house. this guitar. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's a signed by Stan Lee. Wow. Oh, wow. And here's our picture with Stan, if I can get it over there for you. Oh, you! I oh, saw so yeah, the guitar yeah. was there. Nice. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we got him to sign it earlier, and then we brought it to the photo session with him. Wow, that and so, so that would definitely be probably the most prized of. That's of cool, so man. Deceased. And I, I like yeah. that it's not like a super mega, high profile uh, celebrity. I like that it's actually because Stan is is super high profile mega celebrity. But I'm just yeah. saying he's more beloved. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if and, you don't like Stan Lee, I almost feel like there's a problem with you. And now everyone he, likes right. that guy. Yeah. It, would that be considered your most valuable uh, piece of memorabilia? Well, you know what happens is just like, because I'm a young dog, uh, people who back in the day might get a Cary Grant autograph, now it's not worth as much. So, you know, it's like, and it depends on who you really cherish. Like, some people would really like to have, um, you know, what would you rather have? Kit Harrington here from Game of Thrones mm -hmm. or, or Brie Larson? You know, so a lot of it depends on your, your, taste. your interest. Yeah. Or I'll show you this one real quick. <laughs> You can see that. I don't know how well that shows. Oh, wow, man. You Justice got them all? League? How about that, huh? So that's Did every... you meet Henry Cavill? Yeah, my wife drooled for about a month, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I would, too. Yeah. Er erase that part of it. Yeah, no, I, I think I almost would, too. And I'm not even, I don't even go that way. But, man, that guy's a good-looking guy, right? He's an attractive No, I don't know. Between him being there and Mimosa... Jason. Yeah. Oh, Jason Momoa. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Momoa. Yeah. 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 Now, then yeah. I had my moment with uh, this young lady right here. I'll show you. It's a delicious man. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, old uh, Wonder Woman. Old yeah. Wonder Woman. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. Nice. I'm moving around too fast. No, so, you're great. So, Gus, how many pieces of uh, signed memorabilia do you have? Do you, even, do you even know the actual number? The actual number? No. I know it's well over 500. Wow, That's a and lot. Uh, and so you've been doing it for ten years. Um, right. Is there any tips uh, if anybody wants to get into this hobby uh, that you could share with someone that uh, could help them get the autograph that they wanted? Well, the easiest, in all seriousness, is to go to the conventions. You know, you got to pay, but that's probably the easiest because what we do at some of these other things, the premieres, and hanging out and stuff like that. It's a long day, and most people, like my family, just kind of shakes their head. Like, really? You spent how many hours out there right, trying to get right. you know, oh, August two or three autographs? Uh, yeah. Not to throw them under yeah. the bus. We've buddy. seen August shake his head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ah, okay. I'll let him know that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. He's a, a bad son. Yeah, I, bad also, I, I saw he yeah. also suited you up with a white claw shirt. He's like, make sure you get the logo on there. I saw it. I saw <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw that. He's like, uh, I'll tell you, we, when we were at a convention, um, did you see the movie Blockers? Yeah, yeah. John Cena? Yeah. yeah. So... My wife went on the internet and found some props, so I went up to his table earlier, and Gus was with me, August, because we got a John Cena wrestling doll sign for him. Sweet. And so um, I said, we'd like to do this photo with you, and we'd like to kind of reenact the blocker scene. He goes, sure, let's do it. So here's the picture if you remember the movie. Oh, I'll go back to it. Oh, that's awesome. That, that's funny. That's too good, man. You're doing, doing uh, <laughs> you, sport, you huh? and John Cena and your family butt chugging. That's terrific. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's really you win. I mean, I feel like that. See that to me getting 
to find that one celebrity that you give them the quirky question, but they like it because it's out of the ordinary and proves that you're a real fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. You know, and John right. Cena, I don't that's care what, what you think about him. I know tons of people hate John Cena, but I'll tell you right now, I don't think there's anybody that's done more for kids in hospitals than John Who Cena. Who hates John Cena? Yeah, it seems a like lot, he's a nice lot, guy. Well, they like to boo him and stuff. You know what uh, I mean? Like, yeah. it's like they, uh, they poo poo on him because yeah, he's a wrestler. Yeah, and he's, he's the like, good guy. Mm. But I'll tell you right now, that guy has made more kids smile, and he seems like a fun guy. Is he pretty nice? Oh, he is great. Oh, man, he couldn't have been nicer. And then we got a picture, another picture with him in August and a couple of the kids who and uh, Marley and, and Kate who know Marley knows the finger sign and everything. She knew it better than I did yeah. to go out there with, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There with uh, John Cena. And yeah. then um, but that's part of the fun. If we can get them to reenact like we did this with uh, remember Lord of the Rings. He yeah. had the <laughs> ring out for us. Elijah. Oh, the fact that so Elijah just, Wood would do that is really cool. It makes you, it right. makes me like them more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, exactly. So that's part of the fun. And then I promise that I show him the man, you know, Becky Lynch. Yeah. If you're into wrestling, you know. Nice. And then here's one more. If you, you really love Halloween, you, you got to love Elvira. Oh, Come man. On. Is she as beautiful in person as she has looked uh, her entire life? Yeah, she is so great. We went to her table to get her autograph. And she talked about, uh, we must talk to her for about 15 minutes. And she was just wonderful. And, you know, she doesn't have the wig on then when you're talking to her as Cassandra Peterson then. Yeah, but yeah. she's really nice. And it was well worth the, the money I spent to talk, you know, just to talk to her. And um, she talked about Elvis when she met Elvis when she was really young. And it's fun stories. I I do look at Elvira and then I look at my wife and I want to say you got to step up your T game here. Whoa, <laughs> I'm just oh saying God. that is inappropriate. Let's have Gus on the line. What I'm are you doing? I'm sorry, Gus. I'm just saying Elvira's got smooth, perfectly white. Oh, her teeth. whole body is ridiculous. Uh, I think she's 170 yeah. years yeah. old and she looks amazing. Yeah, uh, my wife. Well, looks she like, makes the jokes about it. Yeah, her, her <laughs> teeth look like they got shot with a freckle gun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a, I'm just saying. Well, that's just, uh, I'm like, wait, I, I, what does Elvira use to you know, protect? from the sun uh <laughs> my god anyway um Gus well Gus, <laughs> i uh i know we gotta go because you're running out of time but uh last thing has there been any experience with any celebrity that has made you like not like the person anymore and be like oh or this person uh i don't know people you how know, bad I, days are yeah i know you might ask i was afraid you might ask because i was like man if i run into him later around down the road you know I was like ah. they're not listening yeah to they're this. not listening to yeah us. No, i say yeah um well, I will tell you this story. Um, uh, let's see. We were at a, uh, a shoot for a TV show, you know, like a uh, variety show during the day. And I can't think of the actress's name off, off time. The show's not on the air anymore, but she would bring in celebrity guests. And okay. Stuff. So anyways, we were out there uh, before premiere and we went to one of the tapings of a show. So they had going around with a mic and they were asking people, where are you from and who have you met? And so I said, yeah, we we're out here and we were at the golden globes last week and drew barrymore blew us off i couldn't believe it you know she just uh, it wasn't the golden globes it was another event i said she just blew us off she wouldn't come over wouldn't give us a time of day and i swear the next week we were at the sags and drew barrymore came over and signed for all kinds of people so i don't know if the word got out or what but it was just funny how that worked out yeah yeah uh-huh. well that that goes back to your whole theory about giving people a pass they might be having a day yeah. as long as you stick with that you're probably gonna yeah, you know yeah, yeah. you're probably gonna win you know mm-hmm. mo- most yeah. most times yeah uh, yeah. All right, Gus. Oh, one last question. Is there a white whale of autographs that you've always wanted or that's super rare, like maybe the celebrity never does autographs or rarely goes out of his house and someone who has his autograph is like, wow, that's super rare? Uh, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, you know, the people who live out in Cal- California get more opportunities. Um, I don't think I've ever gotten anything signed by Julia Roberts. I've gotten several pictures of, of her. But I haven't got anything signed yet, and I'm sure as once we disconnect here, I'm going to go. Oh, I should have uh, should have mentioned that as well. But uh, yeah, probably Julia Roberts off the top of my head. But I've met a lot of the Oscar people and got a lot of autographs from different Oscar winners over the years. So I've been very fortunate. Cool. And I got to do one more picture if I can. Yeah, yeah. Gotta yeah show, sure. We're trying to turn the grandkids into Comic Con Comic Con fans now. So this is Aww. this is not Gus's kids, but this other side. They had a blast dressing up. I and, like um, little Thanos. Oh, is adorable. <laughs> oh, 
you know what? He thought he was the star because everybody started coming up to him and asking to pose with pictures with him because he had the Thanos thing on. Yeah, that's a great little so, costume. Oh, so uh, yeah. August's brother is cool with yeah. it down. It seemed like August is a yeah. stick in the mud. Yeah, August is, okay, hold <laughs> Why on. is like, his kids I, dressed like Thanos? I don't know August's brother's name, uh, but he didn't shake his head at your autograph collection <laughs> and your hobby. It's only August who passes judgment uh, and spits on your hobby. We've been trying to talk to we, you for uh, for years and now. And August has been uh, keeping you from us, I feel like. We appreciate your hobby just because your son doesn't. How dare he? Well, he, he loves it when I get him the wrestling stuff. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, it's good enough for a, yeah. Get my John Cena baby doll sign, <laughs> but but uh, but uh, oh, but make fun of my Julia Roberts white whale. Auto- yeah, oh, oh, we're gonna get him. But so I'll have bad. to I'll have to tell you that he did come last year um, when we Pee Wee Herman was in town. Mm. Yes, and his his wife Tippy is a big Pee Wee Herman fan, mm. and the girls even knew the show. So. So they waited and got up there finally to talk to Pee Wee at his table, and they were all of a sudden, a lot of young kids, they get like, uh oh, what do I say now? Because here's the star. And so Pee Wee was great. He started asking them questions Ah. to get them to talk, and I thought that was great to hear that. Seem to do that. Oh, so uh, August, uh, he'll make fun of it until yeah. he needs a, he's a he sweet, needs a... sweet Pee Wee. <laughs> <laughs> don't I, 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 I don't know that. what to say to Pee Wee. I'm too nervous. <laughs> <laughs> we learned a lot about August yeah, today. We really did. Uh, well, Gus, yeah. thanks for coming on with us. Yeah, we appreciate man. it. We appreciate it. You did an awesome job. Uh, your son, uh, yeah, he is in the chat room. He says you did a great job, Dad. Yeah, yeah. All right, thanks. And yeah, if any time down the road you want to see some different stuff, just let me know. I'll be glad to help you. Oh, yeah, man. we'll definitely do that. too cool. Yeah, yeah, we'll revisit it for sure. Hey, have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, okay? All right, thanks so much. All right, yeah, man. Take care. Guys. There is, uh, that's uh, that's the good Gus. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll <laughs> yes. refer to him as yeah, the good Gus. That's the good Gus. Uh, yeah, yeah. We know who the, uh, you know, maybe yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the. Yeah, yeah. likes Pee Wee. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Definitely doesn't like. Uh, uh, Space Jam basketballs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. That's one of the funniest uh, stories. Uh, I swear to God. Yeah, yeah. I don't even now know if I'm we're with, supposed uh, to tell. Nice Gus. Uh, you, know, you don't appreciate yeah, the Space yeah. Jam basketball. You don't like anything. Yeah. <laughs> what, kid do- what kid doesn't want a baseball or a basketball? Excuse me. Oh, yeah. So what? Does- you're 23. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want a Space Jam basketball? It's awesome. You know uh, what? It's a gift. At least you got a gift. All right. Let's take a quick break. When we come back, we got another guest on the line that we're going to talk to you about uh, one of my favorite things to do. So we'll be right back with more Corporate Time. Welcome back to A Corporate Time with Tom and Dan. I'm Dan. I'm Tom. Um, So this next interview, uh, Travis Butler set up, and a little bit of background uh, of Butler. When I first met or started to meet Butler at events, you know, he he was a BDM Mm -hmm. and a listener. Yeah, yeah. Um, Actually, if you you ever tour the studio, if you ever get the chance to come to our studio in the bathroom, he wrote his old job and then he signed it and he drew like a Union Jack. British flag in there. I should have known then. Uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> don't yeah. hire this guy. <laughs> How long was he in there? My God. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and uh, and so he was the reason I purchased my one wheel. Oh, because, Travis was the catalyst because uh, he brought it to a beer fest years ago, and then I rode around. Oh, he the had beer to be fest. that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's th- like the guy at the roller rink with a parrot on his shoulder. And then I rode around. Then he, I started talking to him back and forth, and he's like, "Hey, you should get one used because at that time I was like, ah, I can't spring." So this like, is all before you had him come in. Fifteen hundred dollars, yeah, yeah. And then he's like, "No, you go on this one wheel forum, uh, yeah. and then they sell them used all the time." And literally, uh, because I don't do anything anybody suggests, <laughs> I didn't do that. But he said, "Like, hey, I found one for sale, nine hundred bucks." And then I'm like, "Can you facilitate the deal?" <laughs> you know, because again, I don't want to do anything myself. I just uh, so like he to- was working for you before. <laughs> Wait a minute. So Butler was working for you before he was officially working for you. Yeah, yeah. Doing menial tasks uh, that I could easily do myself. So wait a minute. Was he an original, (laughs) one of your original pain pill handyman like scam guy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was in your, like in your phone as one wheel Travis? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Weed one wheel Travis. Weed one wheel Travis. Because I put the drug first. Edible. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah. yeah. He can get the hookup. Edible one wheel Travis. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Travis set this up because this man is a professional one wheeler and the founder of uh, Float Life which uh, I'm familiar familiar with from the uh, Facebook uh, one wheel page. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we got Jeff uh, McCosker on the line with us. How you doing, Jeff? 
Hey, I'm good. You nailed that last name. Good work. <laughs> yeah, he did it. He did it finally. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> I mean, you don't know how close I was to messing it up. Yeah, I, was, I was waiting for the T. Hey, yeah. I was waiting for the T, but it didn't, it didn't I, land. I mean, it was close. So, Jeff, uh, first, how are you doing, and how would you get into uh, one-wheeling? Yeah, we're uh, we're hanging in here. We're in California, so we're all sheltered in place and all that kind of fun stuff. So yeah, yeah. dealing with that. But um, yeah, all things aside, things are going pretty good. Um, as far as one wheeling stuff, I remember my buddy Nick Sanfilippo way back in the day sent me this Kickstarter video of this crazy little like go kart one wheeled electric board type thing. I'm like, yeah, that seems pretty interesting. Let's check the price on that. Oh yeah, fifteen hundred bucks. No thanks. Yeah, 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 yeah that's yeah. what I did too. <laughs> yeah, no way. So, um, you know, a couple months go by, keep going back to it, keep watching this video, and then uh, tax season comes. I end up getting a tax return that's a little higher than expected, and I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Why not? Let's just drop in. If I don't like it, I'll just resell it. And at that time, the used ones were actually selling for more than the new ones because they were so hard to get. Yes. So I'm like, hey, worst case, I break even. We're good to go. And the thing shows up in the mail jump on it, ride it. Five minutes later, I'm back online ordering a second one. Yeah, it, it really is. I tell people all the time, like, man, this is a quality product. Like, the way it's built, um, the uh, the mechanism inside, the, the power that it has. Like, uh, people often equate it to, like, uh, electric skateboards or, like, uh, I don't or think hover, it's anywhere close. Or hoverboards and stuff. And I'm like, man, this is totally different. Um, and I, I kind of describe it to people uh, as like the same technology a, a Segway has. When people often, I'm sure you get the same question all the time when you're riding it, people are like, oh, how does that work? I'm like, oh, similar to a Segway, it works by, uh, you know, literally, uh, I, I, and you can explain it better than me, but like a gyroscopic motor that uh, kind of uh, goes with your body movement. How exactly would do you describe uh, the way a one wheel works? Yeah, I mean, you pretty much nailed it. It's like, it's a badass, super dangerous, wildly fun skateboard segue. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, uh, and it has more power. Like, I use mine all the time to... Uh, Go get beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that. <laughs> and to pull my two sons in a wagon uh, around the neighborhood. I, I pull them to the park. Or I used to. Uh, pull them to the park like uh, that's two, so probably two and a half miles from my house, and it'll go. And uh, I've pulled it down the beach before, loaded up with a cooler and stuff. Like the amount of torque and power the electric motor has is surprising it's because it's so yeah. small. No, oh, absolutely, and they're sort of light years beyond where they were when they first launched too. Because I jumped in in the V1 days; that was their original Kickstarter model, and then they came out with the Plus after that, and then the XR, and then the Pint. So. They ride a whole hell of a lot better than they used to, so I'm looking forward to what they come out with next. I, I was going to ask you, Jeff. I'm still a V1. Uh, boo! Uh, no. Boo! Um, me and Travis oh, here. Oh, he's a cl it's classic. It's a classic. Yeah, yeah, Nothing yeah. wrong with it. It's just it's like a, it's like driving around a classic car. You're not going to get the same performance, Ow. but you know, yeah. something about it. Yeah, you got to crank it in the beginning. And I've been contemplating buying the XR. Is it exponentially better? Oh yeah, get one immediately. Okay, I mean, I am. That's, I mean, especially now. <laughs> That's all because, it took. Because uh, if I'm going to, you know, like I could ride around outside in my neighborhood, uh, it's about all I could do nowadays. So uh, I'm, I'm going to order one. Um, so, Jeff, I yeah, want you got that. You got that Trump money coming in, right? What yeah. else are you going to spend it on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, uh, I'm going to uh, save it in case they want it back. <laughs> also, I think we're, <laughs> we make too much. We don't get Yeah, we don't I, don't get think we, I don't think we can get any of that. Uh, but uh, so, Jeff, I want to ask you about... Uh, uh, your other interests, because I know that uh, you're a, a professional snowboarder, you wakeboard, skateboard, and uh, you've had some uh, some close calls in all these adventures. Uh, tell us about the, because uh, we listened to a little bit of an interview about you getting stuck on the ledge of a mountain. Um, tell us about that. Oh, man, I don't know where you guys heard that professional snowboarder comment, but that's not true. <laughs> uh, Travis told me. Uh, he he wrote it down in the paper. It said professional snowboarder. Yeah, we got to bring him in. <laughs> Travis, get in here. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, I mean, grew up doing it. Still snowboard. It's not at all. You want to see? Uh, have, you ever been, have you ever been on an interview where we fire an employee live? <laughs> <on the air>? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, well, tech, hold on, Jeff. Tech, have you ever gotten paid by any sponsor or, you know, because... 
but professionals loose. Uh, like it's te- not loose. Yeah, maybe technically. <laughs> well, if, I mean, if you we got, call ourselves professionals. What he means, Sam. <laughs> yeah, if you got paid one dollar for anything that you did, technically that could be counted as professional. Yeah. Um, that's fair enough. I've had I've had a lot of travel and events and stuff like that paid for, so maybe that counts. Yeah, 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 yeah close yeah. enough. All right, you're yeah. off. You're off the hook mm-hmm. this time. <laughs> oh, mm-hmm. thank God. So, uh, were you stuck on the edge of the show, uh, like a mountain? Because that, it was written down in here too. Or is that a mistake that uh, Travis wrote? <laughs> <laughs> no, that one's that one's correct. That was a uh, ended up. Yes, I was stuck. I got clicked out uh, up in Zermatt, up in the. Uh, that's like you guys ever heard of the Matterhorn before? It's on the uh, yeah. on that Tobler own bar. You know? Yeah, yeah. yeah I went snowboarding out there. Um, ended up getting clipped out on a uh, few hundred feet on a cliff face and tried to hike out fell down a crevasse and had to get helicoptered out. Super fun day. Whoa. That's uh, kind of mega scary. Yeah. Anytime the, yeah. the helicopter has to come get you out, it's uh, yeah, that's a bad day. Um, yeah. So, well, it's even sketchier when the storm's rolling in and they get up there and we're 14,500 feet, so the helicopter can barely hold on. There's too much weight for it to take off. And one of the guys has to jump out and wait on the side of the cliff while the helicopter is down. <laughs> oh my God! That's rough, especially for the guy that's like, uh, "Hey, I mean, I'll, I'll be back if I can make it back." <laughs> it's like, uh, "All right, I'll, uh, I'll just." Uh, I've never right wanted to be the guy that the other people look at me and go, "Like, stay here. We'll get help." <laughs> no, no, I'll get help. Yeah, I'm yeah. getting help. You stay here. Yeah, you're gonna freeze to death. I'm not freezing to death. Yeah, yeah, because the person always inevitably you you like the person uh, leaves and then uh, like disappears in the horizon and then you're like. I hope he comes back. <laughs> That's all you have is hope at that point. Um, so, uh, Jeff, I want to talk to you about the uh, the One Wheel Festival that you started. Uh, tell us about that. Oh, you're talking about Float Life Fest? Yeah. Oh, so that's really rad. So, um, actually, Justin Thompson's the main guy that runs that. We're typically title sponsor of it. That's over on East Coast. So that's in North Carolina, right outside of Asheville. And that's super rad. So that's like the biggest community led one wheel event that we have all year. Um, we've done three of them now for the last three years and we end up getting between three to 500 people from all over the country crews out there. We have big race series that happens, trick competition, all sorts of different stuff. And there ends up being a winner every year. It's an awesome event. Everyone camps out for like three to five days and there's live music and food and Great time. I saw some of the uh, videos from the trick competition, I think, that Butler showed me. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. it looks like a hell of a good event, man. Oh, well, now these these kids are doing, like, kickflips. Oh, it's ridiculous. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. It's, uh... It's oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's wild to see the progression of where it's gone. Because, I mean, we've been doing it three years in a row now, and every year it's just, like, exponential improvement. But... Then again, every year, Bodie Harrison just takes the whole damn trick comp because he just is wildly better than anyone else. So what are you going to do? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you found that, you know, not to geek out on one wheels, and I don't even own one, but have you found that, like, uh, one wheels um, size-wise and maybe, you know, weight-wise, something like the pint has opened up the door to do more tricks just based on size and weight? So not really necessarily. There isn't a whole lot that you can do on the pint that you can't do on the XR, just right, right. the size and weight aspect of it. Sure. Um, we thought that might be the case right out the gate, but so far we're not really finding that to be too true. Um, if they could cut some of the weight out of them, we could definitely start doing new stuff, which would be really, really cool. Because right now, I mean, they're, what, 27 pounds right yeah. out the box. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, there, it's pretty tough to flip these things around and land back on them but i think the biggest improvement is just going to come from updating the firmware because that's been the main thing through all the models like the specs on them don't change a ton like they'll beef up the batteries they'll beef up the motor a little bit have a little bit more juice running into it but really the secret sauce to these things is the firmware and the code that's written into them because that's what defines completely how it rides are people like hacking them? Because I've seen on like obviously the one wheel Facebook page and stuff. Like you got the guy that uh, figured out how to literally uh, have a mobile battery pack that he uh, oh puts, I saw that guy that he puts in his backpack and is able to hook it up to his one wheel so he can go like extreme distances. <laughs> and I know other like uh, you know engineers have figured out how to take theirs apart and like change the programming and stuff. And has someone uh, figured out how to? make it work better than factory or still like basic how you get it out of the box is going to be the best scenario 
So no one's been able to hack the firmware yet. Um, so no one's really updated any of the code in there. But as far as like hacking it on a physical level, yeah, we've been building parts and accessories for them since they first came out to make them ride better. I mean, we invented float plates, which are like a uh, skid plate that goes on the bottom that's self-lubricating plastics. So you can start nose and tail sliding them on stuff. Um, you know, we always change the tires right out of the box, different different ride styles flip the foot pads around to get concave on them so you can get better leverage more comfortable so we've been hacking it as far as like a physical aspect goes but as far as internally with the firmware no one's really been able to step up to that yet and then future motion the company that makes it they really don't want people messing with them at all they think it's sort of perfect right out of the box so they're kind of trying to de-incentivize people from making any mods to it. They're changing some firmware stuff and some hardware stuff to make it harder to replace parts and basically taking a page out of, like, Apple and Tesla's playbook, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you kind of know when something becomes popular that it will, especially when, well, I'll, I'll say it like this, when two things become popular, the device and then the customization of the device. I mean, we've all seen it in cars, like even my VW. You know, if I wanted to flash it or make it crazy, I could, but they're going to know I did it and they're going to void the warranty. Is that kind of what they're doing? Yeah, that's, well, that's what they've been doing since the start, but now they're doing different things, like they're seeing people, uh, you know, when the battery burns out or you break a controller module, they'll actually um, sort of like poach apart from a different board and put it on to get their board running again. You used to be able to swap the controller modules and the batteries independently, yeah. but now they've synced up the BMS inside the battery to have to pair with the controller module, oh, no. to where if you just change the battery out, your board doesn't function anymore. So right. now you have to send your board back into the factory yeah. to have them working on it. They're trying to de-incentivize people mm. repairing them themselves. That makes sense. I mean, well, it doesn't. It, yeah, it also doesn't, but no. I, I get what you're saying. No, it makes sense. It sucks, but it makes sense jeff are you like me and like you secretly hope that the one wheel doesn't get too popular because hear me out i i've been thinking about this like right now which i've always been surprised about is like well maybe not right now but before this whole uh coronavirus thing you can go to the beach and you could ride your one wheel down the beach and it is fun as hell like uh, especially like a hard packed sand near the water yeah, you got everywhere to go uh, you could cruise down the beach and uh you know, I thought that some like lifeguard or a beach patrol would uh, kick me out, like you know, but they don't. Like it's fine. I mean, you're not doing anything. It's completely silent. It doesn't uh, make any uh, grooves or anything. It's fine. But uh, I, I had like thought. I'm like, if this gets too popular and there's too many one wheels on the beach, they're they're gonna start banning it, and they're gonna you know people will ruin it. Have you thought about that? Like, uh, what's to stop? Or have you heard of stories of people banning one wheels from the beach or like uh, areas like that? Because it is really, really fun. Yeah, and that's kind of a funny thing, too, is you can easily like become a victim of your own success. Like anything that blows up crazy popular like that and just doesn't grow organically to the point where it's supposed to be can just end up sort of getting a blanket ban on everything, right? So. Yeah, we are seeing uh, in some places they're getting grouped in with, like, the electric rental scooters. Like, down in San Diego, for example, they totally banned them pretty much everywhere down there, like, riding down by the beach because those electric scooters became such a big problem. We just yep. got lumped in with them. Uh, so, sucks. yeah, we are seeing that that's definitely a big problem. Um, but, you know, the community is getting together and really trying to put a, separate us apart from those rental scooters and from other electric rideables and, you know, make it okay. Like here in Sacramento, California, we're actually completely separate. So the way the laws work here is rental scooters have one set of laws and then one wheels have a completely different. We're actually listed under electric assisted personal mobility devices. So whereas the electric scooters can't ride on the sidewalks, we can, and we can actually ride faster than them. And there's all sorts of cool stuff that goes behind it. So <clears throat> as long as you get your local municipality set up correctly, you're good. The problem is people just jump in, ride them like crazy. People start complaining and then they start making laws and lumping them in. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. It's, you got to have a passionate enough local community in order to make sure the laws get set up right. So what do you think the future of, like, uh, one wheel is going to be? Like, how far will we be able to ride on the batteries? <clears throat> how fast will these things be able to go? Like, what kind of uh, incremental increases do you see the technology moving forward? 
I mean, it looks like what they've been pushing so far has just been increased range, more power. And then with the release of the pint, they went with a sort of more affordable business model on that one. So um, really, who knows? It's up to them. We're kind of beholden to battery technology at this point because you can only get so much power out of so light of a pack. And it has to also be safe and stable. So that's sort of a limiting factor. But it's it's really just that and the motor are the only two parts that we're just kind of waiting on tech to catch up on. Other than that, really, the only things that they can tweak are sort of design shape and keep working on the firmware to just make it ride better. That's that's really it. So hopefully we're shooting for, you know, a little bit smaller, more compact sort of pint size, but with the power and the rideability of the XR and a ton of range. That's really what everyone wants. I kind of want them to add like a second wheel and then put a seat on the back of it yeah, and yeah. then some handlebars. <laughs> <laughs> on the front. <laughs> now we're talking. Yeah, I would like uh, that. Now, Jeff. Uh, yeah, call <clears throat> call it a two wheel, right? Yeah, like a moda moda something. Uh, some I don't know. We'll I, work on it. I don't want to uh, <laughs> hit you up for some free things. Oh come on! Do no, a, don't do it. Do a payola deal here, but uh, I don't. I'm, I'm in the you market. Be, you want to be a sponsored rider? I was looking at his list of sponsored riders. I mean, I got a I got a good enough following here that I could uh, start promoting your products, and uh, I'm in. I've been in the market for a front skid plate. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I like some of your uh, aftermarket stuff that you have available, and I'm, I'm just saying that maybe uh, you can. Jo- but you need that, a better name because uh, I'm looking at the pro team. We got Jeff, uh, we've got Sly Dog Stro. <laughs> I don't uh, think you, uh, Dom Land Pirate, uh, Jake. <laughs> What's your one wheel in name, Tom? Well, uh, land pirate kind of stuff. Uh, they call me the butt pirate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're the butt pirate. <laughs> it's a little bit different. Yeah. Uh, Do you have a spot on your website for butt pirate? <laughs> <laughs> uh, the local- hey, we, were, we run a family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're yeah. nothing, they're nothing, yeah, uh, nothing nefarious about it. Uh, I'm just saying, if you send if you send me a couple of aftermarket parts, uh, you know, I'll. Yeah. Uh, Old I'll, butt pirates got gotcha. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll promote them to uh, our listeners. I know there's a couple that got them one wheel. Uh, don't and send it to Travis. Send it to me. If you need a skid plate from Float. Man, he's cutting out <laughs> Butler from the deal. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just say, attention, Tom Van. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, any uh, extra toys. And uh, I'll give you some grip tape. Uh, let's say uh, I'm looking at your website right now. New wheels. Cool. Uh, Get a Float time. plate from Float-Supply.com. And that's coming from Butt Pirate. <laughs> 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 I'm just saying, uh, any free memorabilia. Don't send him it. anything. <laughs> no. Don't no. send him anything and delete your <laughs> Skype connection after or whatever. Delete and never call us again. Run, run from this man. Uh, again, uh, promote your uh, website. It's really nice, man. You guys got all kinds of good stuff on your website. Yeah, thanks, man. Appreciate it. I mean, it's like thousands of YouTube uh, or like uh, one wheel videos. I mean, if you want one wheel stuff, uh, float-supply.com. Yeah, oh, check out the YouTube channel. That's where all the fun shit is, for sure. So uh, that one, just look up the Float Life on YouTube. We pop right up. Cool, cool. Well, Jeff, it was good talking to yeah, you, man. Thanks for I your appreciate time, it. man. And stay safe out there. And uh, hopefully uh, one of these days, I've been wanting to make it up to that uh, North Carolina uh, one-wheel fest. Uh, we float, do it. float fest. And, uh, you know, maybe if I, uh, you know, um, up it. there, and, uh, and I'll then see e- you. EJ can make fun of you. Yeah, I know, I know. Because it's, uh, it, you know, but this is cooler than Pokemon. The Pokemon's stupid. This is actually extreme sport well, that here. That is your opinion. <laughs> <laughs> hey Jeff, thanks for the well, time. Hey, I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. Yeah, I'll make you guys a deal. Why don't you come out to Float Life Fest for Float Life Fest Four this year? And if you beat us in a race. Butt pirates on the team. <laughs> All right. Wow. Uh, I, I guess you the challenge. I guess so, we're Jeff, going. <laughs> I, I guess we're going. You don't know what I'll do to win. <laughs> yeah. You you have no idea what this. I mean this. Uh, they this, don't call me the butt yeah, pirate for yeah. nothing. You get extra yeah. points for being in flip flops. Uh, uh, I'm pretty sure you don't understand how yeah. stubborn butt pirate is. Uh, like uh, Blackbeard put fuses in his hair. You don't know where I want to <laughs> yeah. put my fuses. <laughs> uh, it's a pink we, fuse. We do know. All right. It's in your well, name. Jeff, oh, thanks yeah. so much, man. We'll talk to you soon. All right, later on, guys. All, All right, right see you. take care. You know, yeah. you, you know, you even embarrass me in front of people that I don't want to talk to. I'm not, e- I'm not even into one wheeling. I'm not even into this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I don't. I've ridden yours before. I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. I think it's cool. Yeah, yeah, I definitely yeah. think it's yeah, cool, yeah. but it's just not my thing. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> and I'm excited to talk to Jeff, the professional one wheel guy, and you embarrass me in front of a guy I don't even care to talk to. <laughs> How My does that God, even God, happen? Sir. That's what Bump Pirate does. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, All right. Part of my charm. <laughs> that's that's uh, the classic <laughs> Bud Pirate charm. <laughs> These tickets aren't that bad. Uh, no, no. For a four day pass. No, they don't. For camping, even, it's 155 bucks. It, well, camping? Even, I'm even, out. Well, you, <laughs> you can do the one without camping. Bud Pirate does camp. Yeah, yeah. Who do you think I am? I thought you were getting an RV. <laughs> I'm not Turd Burglar. Yeah, turd yeah. Burglar camps. Bud well, Pirate doesn't camp. If an R- then they got RV sites, that's a different story. Uh, but I need air- And then AC. everybody's walking by. They're like, you see that RV over there? That's Bud Pirate. <laughs> He thinks he's better than us. Uh, you can tell by the butt skull and crossbones. <laughs> <laughs> His butt bones. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna get out here. Look for the butt bones. <laughs> <laughs> My wife's all mad now. <laughs> get out of here. Uh, all right, we'll take a break. No, oh, no, that's, that's, it. It. that's it. That's it. That's the show. Oh, uh, I needed a break after that. Okay. Uh, I was going to say one for for life. <laughs> Going crazy. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, he's got a butt! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys.